one day have moderators, I swear. Okay, so now we just need to angle this correct. We put it on top of a box so that it would work, but uh, maybe it's too high. Maybe it's not high enough. I don't know. It is kind of un uneven because it's on the bed. So how do I how do I fix this? Let me see if I can put something under the box, make it a little bit more even. Because the bed, the bed is like such bad shape. Okay, so we have a lot of things to talk about today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the list of things that I have over here, like I promised. Uh, I also, since it's my birthday, Anna, hello, I made this an attendance sheet. So anyone who joins, uh, I will probably take attendance. Well, not probably, I will take attendance. Uh, I even have the markers ready over here. So I am ready for almost everything. It's just everything is so out of order that, not out of order, everything's just like, first I was trying to organize this thing because it's, I have this on the top of a box and uh, my setup is literally a box and the old uh, tablet laptop case I had and then there's the tripod and then there's the camera of course and thank you Anna appreciate it now uh, today officially the day it's been a, a normal day I honestly haven't done anything yet that's like birthday related except for this uh, so basically after this maybe the plan uh, we're probably gonna go out and eat with like some people but first I wanted to dedicate the day uh, the time that we have here to talk about some things uh, the title by the way is not clickbait it's there's actually a situation with uh, with waves going on but we're gonna talk about that later because uh, that's gonna be part of the topics that I wanna talk about. Yeah, so uh, first, obviously just wanted to uh, let everyone know officially, yes, today is my birthday. Uh, it has been a normal day. Earlier, I thought it was gonna rain. It hasn't rained, at least not that I can remember. Uh, so it's been pretty chill, but uh, not a bad day. I have not been disappointed with how the day's been. Uh, I have been thinking about what else we're going to do today because in the conversation part, sometimes I feel like I should ask questions. So let me open, let me open this live stream on the computer because I have the computer right here next to me. And I'm going to definitely have to silence this because if not, there's gonna be two different audios coming in here. But uh, here, I'll be able to ask questions. Uh, we'll be able to talk about some things that maybe we have to talk about. Uh, of course, if there's anything you'd like to ask, uh, if there's anything you'd like to specifically talk about, go ahead. Uh, I will accept almost any and all questions. And almost, I say, because Q&A is mainly about Ecuador topics. So let's try to focus on that. Of course, if there's a anything else we do need to talk about, then we will. Let me drop the volume over here because if not, I'm gonna hear myself double and that uh, is gonna sound awkward. Okay, so uh, now that we have the whole birthday situation out of the way, uh, honestly, like I said, I don't have a lot more plans for today except for like maybe like people who come over later, they might I don't know if they are gonna come because my brother was trying to organize. This is the this is the official birthday. Okay, let me let me let me explain. Obviously, the the live stream that was this was my official birthday plan because this is what I wanted to do. 
But uh, my brother told me that we were gonna hang out with a friend, uh, one of my best friends here, the one that I always talk about in my videos, Nacho. We we're gonna hang out with him. We we're gonna hang out with another friend, uh, his name Santana. I don't know if, if you guys watched the live stream from last year for my birthday. They were the two friends that, all, all four of us, because it was my brother, uh, my two friends, and me, we all went out to eat. Okay, we all went to Roll Wings. And we were gonna hang out again this year. Technically, we were supposed to hang out for Christmas and have like some kind of like Christmas dinner or something like that. We were even contemplating like uh, st spending the night at one of our houses, you know, a sleepover. But um, everyone was busy. The holiday season is always a mess because you, you wanna like organize something and then something else comes up. So you make a plan there and then it kind of like hits a certain day of the schedule. And then afterwards someone else comes out and they're like, oh, we wanna do something. And sometimes the original plan that you had, it gets like moved a different day. So it's, it's kind of chaotic. And I, I assume that's worldwide, but that was gonna be the plan with, uh, with the guys for Christmas, New Year's-ish, you know, around there. But it didn't happen. So we decided the next day to go out, it was gonna be today for uh, my birthday. And unfortunately, uh, the guys were were busy again. Well, well one of them was, uh, my best friend. He was uh, kind of busy today, so he actually, on Thursdays, he's typically busy because he has to do something with uh, his work, his job. He has like a separate job that he has to do like on Thursdays, but anyways, uh, don't want to give out too much of his information. But uh, that's what he had to do. And so, we were left with, we don't know, should we go out yesterday? We were planning on going out yesterday. We were planning on going out tomorrow. Yesterday, no one said anything. Today, my best friend's out. Tomorrow, uh, unfortunately, my other friend, Carlos Santana, he, he can't, he couldn't. So, uh, because he has to go to Guayaquil. Uh, Guayaquil. I, I always wanna pronounce it Guayaquil, not because of kill, but because it's just the way that I would pronounce it like in English, like an English accent. So yeah, he had to, uh, he has to go do that tomorrow. Today, we can't hang out like with all three of us, all four of us. So uh, today we're probably planning on only my brother, uh, our friend Santana, uh, me, my friend uh, Arlette, Spider Gwen, uh, from the Halloween event. Well, technically this year she wasn't Spider Gwen; she was more like a witch. But um, and I think I think two more friends who said happy birthday and one of them asked, hey, are you uh, doing anything? I'm like, I mean, I think we're gonna hang out. They're like, okay, let me know, or I'll let you know also. And I was like, okay. So uh, yeah, that's the birthday plans. The, uh, the, the unofficial, not me organizing plans because I organized this and uh, I was, if I wasn't, if no one had organized anything, like if no one would have said, hey, Ace, let's, let's do something because the person who told me something was my brother and Arlette. They were the ones who separately said, let's do something. Uh, and I was like, okay. Uh, but if no one had said anything, I would have just, uh, I would have personally just told my friends who actually told me happy birthday, like the people who said, hey, hey, happy birthday. I would have said, okay, uh, guys, do you wanna do something? But since uh, I already have a plan over here, I said, okay, let's do that. And, uh, I don't know if I should pronounce the name uh, B, P-E. Uh, appreciate it, thank you very much. Uh, how are things over in Michigan? Uh, is everything well? Do you have any questions? Because I would like to, now that we, we talked about birthday stuff, I, I sometimes talk too much. <laughs> so, um, is there any questions that uh, you have, the audience, you guys? Uh, anything that you would like to ask about Ecuador that maybe I can answer at this moment. Uh, honestly, with a lot of the things that I do in my videos, I like to prepare. I have my own information based on my experiences, but I also interview people. I ask friends. I ask family who lives here in the country. Um, I ask friends, families, uh, acquaintances. I always ask everyone so that the information is complete because uh, I want to make sure to give as much information as possible. But uh, there are things I can answer immediately, so uh, yeah. Also, like I said before, if you would like me to write your name down in the attendance sheet, 
uh, I'm actually, I was thinking of for this, for the attendance sheet, uh, writing down everyone who, who told me happy birthday today because uh, it would feel kind of unfair if I didn't write the people who sent me a message because some people sent me messages on, uh, on WhatsApp, some people on Instagram, not a lot. Honestly, uh, if I had to count, <laughs> Uh, probably about less than 10, uh, less than 10 people have told me happy birthday today. But um, I mean, it's not really quantity, it's quality. That's why I let people, you know, they remember, my friends remember, if they remember, then hey, that's cool. It means uh, you took a little bit extra effort to remember my birthday. So uh, if you tell me yours, if there's a way for me to tell you, to say happy birthday to you, then you know, I probably will. Um, that, well, of course, if uh, for the people who sent me a message. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, the situation. So I don't know if we wanna, if we wanna do this. Like if you wanna, want me to write your name. Obviously, so far right now, uh, Anna and B, P-E, I will be writing your names down over here. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, okay, a question. Uh, I think, I want to bring my two dogs uh, stay dog situation stare, scares me and struggling where to land live when come to Ecuador. Almost done with temporary visa. Okay, so uh, if you're coming to, to live in Ecuador and uh, you want the safest place, um, you definitely would want to go either to Loja. Everyone, everyone, everyone is like, put Loja in my face, like, this is the safest place. Like you can walk around. Like they almost the way that they describe it, it almost feels like the the United States because uh, a lot of people like they go around. They're like they're they're with their phones over in Loja apparently, and in the states I know that's a normal thing, uh, but over here I mean I've said it before. You can't you can't walk around like like oh I got my phone out. I'm just gonna like you know show it off. The other day, I was talking to the secretary at my, uh, at my workplace. Oh, and Aaron, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Uh, I hope everything is well. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Uh, but anyways, like I was saying over here, uh, the secretary at the place where I work, uh, the academy, the English academy, I give classes. I'm an English teacher. Um, she told me, like, I asked her, like, what's the situation? Because she's been talking to me, like, some things that are like happening to her. And um, she told me that uh, people will rob you for anything. Like I was asking her because I was wondering if people would rob you if you're wearing like a nice shirt or like, hey, a nice pair of shoes or hey, maybe you've got a watch. Like obviously the watch for sure. The watch makes you a target. Uh, jewelry, I'm not wearing my chain, but jewelry makes you a target. Having your phone out makes you a target. But I was like, not, I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to shoes. But uh, she told me, yeah, if they see you with a nice, very, very, like, obviously not nice pair of shoes, uh, they could rob you for that. So, um, and she, she even said someone got robbed uh, while they were running. Like, they were, like, walking, or not running, they were walking. They went to buy medicine, and someone robbed her bag and the medicine that she had. And the secretary was like, what are people going to do with medicine? And I'm like, good point. People will rob just about anything. But anyways, um, like I was saying, Loja seems to be super safe. Uh, where am I specifically? I am in the city of Puerto Viejo. Uh, I hear that it's not a good thing to normally say where exactly you are, but um, I think in a lot of my videos, it's very noticeable because I promote Puerto Viejo a lot. Um, a lot of people from here, from Puerto Viejo, say that Puerto Viejo doesn't have a lot to offer. Like, I'll talk to my friends sometimes and we'll be like, what do we do? And they're like, there's not much to do. Like, you can go out, you can drink, um, you can go out to eat, you can go to the two parks, Rotonda, Las Vegas Park. They are amazing parks, Very, really, really pretty. Um, you can go to the shopping, but like, <laughs> the shopping isn't even like a full-blown mall. So it's like, if you go to the shopping, it's like, you walk around for like 10, maybe 20 minutes, and like you're like, okay, I'm good. You can go to a movie theater at the mall, for sure. Um, you can drive around the city, of course. Um, but it's like, if you say like, oh, recreational areas, just the parks, 
there's not like something like you know uh, maybe bowling uh, laser tag uh, I don't know maybe I'm thinking too much like a kid but um, not a lot of things to do aside from like like sports uh, parks and stuff like that so uh, yeah but for the to me in my opinion if you're really into the food into future prospects because Puerto Viejo is advancing. They're making the, I think it's called Centro Comercial, which is like, I guess, another form of a, of a mall here in Puerto Viejo. It's gonna be really, really, really cool. So, um, I mean, it's gonna be big. So it's gonna be bigger than the, than the previous, than the shopping that we have. So it's something else to do. Uh, so it's just things, it's alternatives, but it's like, it's hard to recommend Puerto Viejo is a city for its safety because it's not it's not 100% safe. No place in the world is 100% safe. I've had a lot of people telling me that um, nowhere in the world is safe. The United States is dangerous because my point of reference is always the United States. Uh, I lived in the States, so I talk about uh, Ecuador based on my opinions in the States and of course varied opinions from different places that people have told me about. But um, my opinion is typically from the states and uh people tell me like yeah the states is dangerous too and yeah i talked about that i said in a in my video uh don't visit ecuador it's not a video that says don't visit ecuador only it just it's trying to make everyone understand that uh i understand that people are going to say don't visit ecuador because of x or y thing like if you don't like uh if you don't like it being hot don't visit ecuador but ecuador isn't the only place that's hot you go to florida extremely hot plus it's humid so it gets even worse before i continue uh no diva thank you very much appreciate you being here uh i'm going to write your name down on the attendance sheet later but i want to answer the questions first that'll probably be like at the end so i'm gonna have to check the live chat uh and aaron have you been to Vilcambamba? uh no it's actually one of the places that i also have heard that i should visit i mean everyone keeps track of like no one doesn't recommend a place in Ecuador except Guayaquil. Uh, it's funny because uh, I, I, like, I talk to people and they're like, you should go here, you should go here, you should go here. But no one says you should go to Guayaquil. Um, I understand because of the danger. And a lot of people say it's really hot. Although some people also say it depends on the season. It's not always hot. Uh, but a lot of people say it is. So, you know, I kind of echo that and I've been there. So... I felt every time I've been there, it's been hot, except for like, if it's at night, of course at night, you get fresh air and stuff like that, so it's not hot. But like during the day, it's kind of uncomfortable to walk around with the heat and the danger. Uh, so it's not a place people recommend me to go, but I have been there a lot. Uh, Vilcabamba, I haven't been there. Uh, just positive, no diva, love it, excellent. I'm glad that everything has been going well for you. Uh, please, either way, uh, not me trying to instill fear, not me trying to say Guayaquil is bad, just be careful. Like, do what you gotta do, have fun, enjoy the malls. There's a lot of, a lot of really cool things to check out in Guayaquil that unfortunately, since I can't travel there all the time, like, and I, right now people are telling me not to go, but like, have fun. Always enjoy the experience, make the most out of any place that you are when you visit it, because you don't go to a place to focus on the bad things. Like people visit other countries in the world and it's not like they're thinking about, oh, the bad stuff. You do know that the bad things happen. You do worry about them, but you don't let them affect your trip. You just understand that it's there and you avoid them because you're focused on the trip and that's great. So don't let anything, I, like any, if anything sounds negative for me, it's not me hating on the place. It's not me trying to deter you from being there. It's just me making sure that you have the best experience and that nothing happens to you. Because I would hate for anything to happen to anyone. Because what happens then? One, you're gonna be really sad, obviously, and I don't want that for you. Uh, two, when you leave, you're gonna tell everyone, like when you go back, this happened to me in this place. And what kind of image is that gonna give Ecuador? A bad one. And Ecuador doesn't deserve it. Ecuador is an amazing country. I keep telling everyone, Ecuador is an amazing country. I love Ecuador. I personally, I, I have preferences, obviously, of certain places in Ecuador that I love more than others, but Ecuador is not a bad country. 
and I don't want anyone to think that that's my permanent opinion. It's just it, the things that I don't like, I have to talk about them. The things that have happened to me, I have to talk about them because you want me to be real. You want me to give you my experience so that you don't have to go through similar things or so that maybe you can go through similar things because the good experiences, obviously, you want to live them too. But uh, yeah, I've talked a lot. Uh, cheers, no diva. <laughs> uh, is there anything, any other questions you guys have? Do you have any questions uh, about Ecuador for me? Anything that you would like to know? Uh, I think we were talking about the, the situation with the pets earlier uh, and where to live. Loja has been the most recommended place to me aside from Cuenca. Loja and Cuenca, really nice places. Uh, highly recommended by everyone, expats and uh, Ecuadorians themselves, who always say they're amazing, beautiful places, really nice. Um, the thing with dogs, uh, always make sure that you go through the process because there is a process to get dogs into the country. Because if not, there's this whole uh, issue. The other day I was reading up some comments about it uh, in the community. And you just have to make sure you go through the paperwork to see if the dog that you have can come and uh, make sure that there's no problem with the, with the whole process. Uh, but yeah, that's the situation with, with pets. Uh, what would you recommend in terms of SIM card? Uh, okay, that's a great question. Uh, I, I'm expecting all questions related to Ecuador right now. Uh, I'm planning to stay here for two months. Okay, I always think it's bad to recommend things that you don't use yourself because it's not fair to the people who are listening to you. Uh, I always talk to everyone and I'm like, like, I don't recommend Claro and Movistar directly to people who live here forever because it's not what I use. I personally use CNT, uh, CNT, uh, CNT, uh, Aaron, thank you so much. I will answer your question in a second. I appreciate the dono, uh, the dono, the donation, I don't know uh, how you say it, but, um, the situation with, uh, with the chip is that I don't recommend CNT to people, even though it's the one that I use, because you have to like, you have to find a good city that has a good connection with CNT. And most cities do, but I don't want to risk telling you, hey, you CNT and the city that you're in, it's not going to work. If you're in Guayaquil, I think you're going to be fine with CNT. If you want to use CNT, go for it. Uh, I recommend it because for me, the internet has been good. Uh, before, their at-home internet was terrible. People still say it's bad. But um, the phone internet has never been to the point where I'm like, oh, this is horrible. It's actually been pretty decent. So I'm really happy with the at-home internet with uh, CNT. Like, not the at-home, but the, the internet that you have, the mobile plan. So I recommend it if you're, gonna, if you're in a city like Guayaquil, uh, if you're in Puerto Viejo, of course. Uh, but if you're anywhere else in the country, uh, you'd probably be better off with Claro because Claro is the company that's had the most time here in Ecuador. Claro is like the, the company that everyone uh, trusts because of how long it's been here. I remember one day I was talking to Roddy, my friend who helped me record in Guayaquil. I was talking to his grandpa and he was telling me like he was one of the original Claro customers. And like he even has the original Glado cell phone when they when they brought it here. Like, so it's like crazy. It's like I'm like, wow, that's how long Glado has been here, and uh, how much people respect it. But um, I recommend Glado because because of that. It's well known. It's respected. There should be cell phone towers all over the country. So that's my recommendation. Uh, BPE. Uh, let me let me talk about that in a second. But first, thanks for being real with your info. Where's the best times to visit Ecuador? Best weather. Aaron, appreciate the question. Uh, once again, it really does depend on what time of the year uh, you come in and like what you want in that time of the year. For example, if you want rain, we're in the rainy season right now. So uh, if you come around this time, the rainy season will be good. And supposedly during the rainy season, I actually had to investigate this. The rainy season is the best for the for for going to the beach because it's not as hot and uh, like dry, so it's better to to come during the rainy season for for when it comes to the beach. Uh, if you want like more sun, if you want like more heat, 
then definitely come during the, the hot season, which is after May, if I remember correctly, because I took uh, notes on that. Uh, the beach season is from December to May. So if you're really into the beach season, definitely come there. When I just did the video about the holidays, the feriados, you could come during Carnaval. Carnaval is like the, the beach holiday for people here. Uh, it is on February 20th and 21st, the day's off, because technically it starts from the 19th, but 19th is a Sunday, so it's already a day off. But uh, 20th, 21st, Carnaval, and Carnaval is crazy. Like, people are throwing foam on each other. They used to throw eggs. They don't do that as much anymore, I think, I hope. Uh, I haven't seen it in these past years. Uh, but definitely foam, they throw cold water on you, water balloons. Uh, it's, like, it's like when you celebrate Halloween, and you had the shaving cream wars, something similar to that, where people are just like throwing stuff at each other. Nothing terrible. Although there were years where people were throwing rotten eggs and dirty water, which was nasty. And there were years where they were selling uh, cans of foam that was like, it was nasty cans. It was, it was like, like, you would get that thrown on you and it would damage your clothing if you were wearing a shirt or your hat. Uh, it would like, leave your skin black like it would leave you like with a, with a black mark like like it's dirty foam like you buy this why is it dirty so it's uh it's a good season if you want to just have fun like and meet a lot of people because a lot of people are out during carnaval but it's also a bad idea if you're just coming to chill like if you're coming to chill in ecuador do not come in carnaval because the streets are full the beaches are full people are throwing stuff at each other uh, you're gonna find it very uncomfortable. Uh, you would be better off waiting until maybe uh, later on in the year after Carnaval. Uh, if you wanna come during a season where there's not as much rain, definitely come after uh, May, which was like after the beach season and after the, the rainy season. So that's my suggestion. So I don't know, Aaron, what you think? Uh, MVP, your Ecuador food video was a riot. It is. Is it my imagination? Is most the food fried? And can you eat salad, raw veggies in cafes and restaurants? BP, love the question, but first let me say hi to Corey. Hello, I will answer your question, Corey, in a second. Don't worry. Uh, I'm just going through the, the order. Uh, in terms of food, a lot of the food, if you're talking about uh, street food, definitely, most of it is fried. Uh, the corviche, fried. Uh, when you buy it on the street, especially because some people I think they make it baked, but it's more like homemade The same thing with the empanadas. It's always fried when it's on the street uh, If you want it baked, you'd have to get it at home um, And Gato Encerrado, which is uh, which was our top food Spoiler for those who haven't watched the video watch it anyways because there are 10 foods You definitely have to try if you come to the coast of Manabi and that's considering I'm still missing a ton more food but we'll make a comprehensive guide of food a different day. But um, a lot of the food is fried, but you don't necessarily, you're not forced into always eating fried food. When you go to restaurants, like we said, uh, like the girl said in the, in the foreign exchange video, a lot of the food comes accompanied with rice, but you don't have to eat the rice. Like you don't have to, like you can ask the place because they give you rice and they give you salad and you tell them, hey, uh, I don't want, uh, I don't want, I'll make that link right now. Or if someone could write the link down, then I appreciate it, but uh, in a second. But um, if someone wants to, for example, if they want to eat just salad with whatever their main meal is, like you could order, tell them, I don't want rice, no quiero arroz, uh, solo quiero ensalada. And if you want to be more specific, like tell them you don't you don't want the rice, uh, but instead of the rice, you want them to give you more salad. So, no me den arroz, pero me podrían dar más ensalada. Like I don't want the rice, but can you give me more salad? Because it feels kind of like you're ripping yourself off if you just tell them don't give me the rice, just put the salad. Like you're paying for even if the rice were only like part in the meal, if the rice were only fifty cents you'd still be losing out on the 50 cents because even if you tell them don't serve me the rice, they're not gonna reduce the price of the food. So tell them to, instead of rice, give you salad. Because, I mean, 
the customer is always right. Um, not in an abusive way, of course. Like obviously if they tell you nicely you can't do that, then you know, don't force it. But um, if you can ask for it, you ask politely, then they're not gonna, I don't think they're gonna tell you no. Uh, and what's up Eduardo? How's it going? Thanks for being here. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the situation with food. You can order more salad. You can also ask for, uh, there are salad dishes. Like my dad in his business uh, in Gonzo's Chusos, he actually, he makes uh, salads. Like you, you can ask him for a Caesar salad. You can ask him just for salad. Like that's, that's a lot. They, they do have that in most places. Just a lot of people, when they go out to eat, they don't go out to eat salad. Uh, they go out to eat a lot of proteins. Uh, something that we've noticed a lot here is that people don't really come here to eat like, like people who live here more like it. They don't eat a lot of like vegetarian options. Everything is protein, 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 but protein in the sense of uh, we're talking about meat, we're talking about chicken, fish, uh, very heavy on the, on the meat and chicken. And uh, the rice is everywhere. <laughs> We've said that before. But, um, but yeah, that's what people mainly focus on eating here. So you don't typically see salad as like the, the premier dish. Like you get a menu, it's not like, oh, salad. If you really, really wanted to eat like salad or healthier foods, you'd have to go to a, to a vegetarian place, a place that sells more uh, green options if you wanted to just focus on that. But uh, every place typically does give you, most place, I won't say every place, most places does have some kind of like salad option, but it's not frequent because like I said, people go out and they order chicken, they order rice and uh, meat. So if you were to order, uh, if you were to order like, like if they were to prepare salad, like if the, the restaurants prepared salad, they wouldn't have a lot of people to sell to, so they would just be wasting vegetables. And I think that would be equally sad. So I wouldn't like that either. But, uh, but yeah, let me first, before I answer any more questions, let me paste the link to the, the food video. That is the, the link to the video of a uh, food, the video about um, the top 10 foods from the coast of Manabi. Uh, like, like uh, BP said, it's, it came out really good. It's super funny. It's super fun. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, now, going on to the next question was the question by Corey. Uh, what would you recommend as far as in expensively touring Galapagos? Flying over and touring yourself or tours from Guayaquil, boat tours, etc. If you want to be very... Uh, frugal, economic, I guess. I mean, going to Galapagos, there really is, it's really hard to be frugal because it's Galapagos. People tell me that in Galapagos, they sell bottles of water for like a dollar or more, like two dollars maybe. I don't know. I don't remember the exact price, but for anyone here, anyone who lives in like mainland Ecuador, Puerto Viejo and cities like that, water doesn't cost more than like 50 cents. So you go to Galapagos and you pay like a dollar or two dollars for like a normal bottle of water you're gonna freak out if you're used to that over here. But um, but like I said, like that's just the way Galapagos is because it's a tourist site, so everything is bumped up in price. Uh, if you really wanna be safe and have the best experience uh, in Galapagos, I do recommend the tour guide because they're gonna be able to give you like, a, 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 like you know, they'll, they'll give you a path. Like if you come by yourself, you have to form the path. You have to choose what you can do in the amount of time that you have. But if you come with the tour guides, if you come with like a, a cruise or like if you come with like something that's, that's formally uh, being represented by, by people who have businesses here of that, then they'll be able to guide you the, the best places uh, for the amount of time that you have. So uh, it depends on which one of those two options you wanna go for. Uh, a more unstructured but cheaper experience because I do feel like if you choose yourself what you want to do, it's going to be cheaper because you don't have to pay for the person guiding you. But it's also going to be more random and you might leave thinking, I missed out on this because uh, I didn't have a guide. 
oh, I didn't know about that. I should have hired a guide. Like if you want to avoid FOMO, that kind of FOMO, then definitely go with the guide route. But if you feel like you can do it by yourself, like you have an idea of what you want to see or you just want to relax like in a really pretty, really nice place, definitely come by yourself. You'll save a lot of money. Uh, I, not come by yourself, like don't use a, like a service, like a guide. Uh, let's see, adding to Aaron's question, best time to find a rental. Uh, Any time that's not a holiday. <laughs> Because during holidays, if you try to, like if you're talking about a place to stay, to like spend the time, if you come during the holidays, every holiday typically involves people going to the beach. So if you were planning on spending a weekend at the beach and you come during a holiday, people are gonna be renting out those places so the prices get bumped up because you have competition and people are like, they're expecting that. Like for Carnival, People are probably since now or since last month, they were probably they're probably already renting out places at beaches. So that way, like reserving, so that way they don't have to pay as much. Or even if they do, they already have their place reserved. Because people want to already be at the beach before Carnaval starts. Because you could travel to the beach in the same days of Carnaval, but the streets are packed. It's like a line to get into the beach. I did that once on my motorcycle with a friend of mine and we had to go through a line. The good thing is we were on motorcycles, but there was a line of people trying to get into the beach. And then obviously the millions of people at the beach, like I say millions, it's probably thousands, but it's still a lot. So it's not recommendable to like rent during holiday season. But of course, if you're renting inside the city uh, during Carnaval, for example, no one's gonna be in the city. So uh, it'll probably be nicer to rent during that time. But it'd also be more dangerous because uh, when the cities get empty, sometimes like the people who are left over, they're undefended because the police aren't paying as much attention. They might've gone to the beach too. So uh, there have been robberies. I almost got robbed uh, during one carnaval in like 2014. Uh, I was with uh, my brother and my girlfriend at the time. And my brother was getting robbed. Like we were, look, okay, the story. We were walking uh, through a street. I think I've told this before, maybe not. We were walking through a street uh, close to where I live. And while we were walking, uh, the person who was my girlfriend at the time, she heard a motorcycle coming. And she said, run. And me and her, we ran. But my brother didn't react on time. So the motorcycle cornered my brother and they started robbing him. Like they were trying to like take his stuff. But I don't know what happened. I had like one of those superhero moments where you think without acting, like you, you think not because of your well-being, but because of the well-being of someone else. Like you just think, you don't think, you just go. And like I turned around, I went and out of the two guys, I punched one guy that was like taller and I knocked him over. And the other guy kind of panicked. So he let go of, uh, of my brother and he did take my brother's keychain but he let go, he uh, like picked up the other guy and they left. And um, we like, I was, I, was, I was glad because I saved my brother, but I also messed up my hand from that hit. Like I wasn't thinking about how hard I hit him or anything, I was just thinking, gotta help my brother. So uh, it was a crazy experience, but um, it taught me, again, because it's not the first time that I've been robbed, but it taught me that you can't just walk around in dark streets uh, when there's no police, when there's no one around. Uh, in general, you just can't be here alone because like it's dangerous and we weren't even alone There were three of us, but um, it's dangerous. So you got to be careful and uh, Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, it's it sucked because uh, I didn't I don't want anyone to go through that my brother worse But uh, it happened to him and uh, I'm just glad we're okay uh, And then my brother's not traumatized <laughs> uh, Let me see here uh, no, porfa, who doesn't like rice? A lot of people uh, who aren't from Ecuador, they don't like eating rice all the time. Rice isn't bad. Uh, there are some people who make it really good. My dad makes the best rice. Love it. Haven't eaten in a long time, but he, I love it. But uh, people like from other places, they don't live on rice. And uh, I've come to realize that more as I've met more people from outside the country. For example, Anna and Joanna, they, they're not like rice fans. They'll eat the rice uh, if it's served, but it's not like they want to eat it every day. 
um, and it's normal because they have a different diet. They like eating pastas too. And in terms of chicken and meat, there's also other foods that pro provide proteins. You tell that to someone here and they're gonna look at you weird, but um, it's true. There are tons of ways to receive protein. Uh, okay, uh, Aaron, thanks for, uh, for that. Yeah, I put, I put the link for the video. Uh, we love eating fish or chicken. Hello, free beer and hot dogs. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice name. Uh, we love eating fish or chicken on the beach in Manta. Okay. Um, honestly, fish and uh, chicken? Like, fish is normal. Eating uh, fish on the beach, that's like what everyone says you have to do. I've been looked at like I'm a weirdo because uh, I go to the beach and sometimes I'll eat chicken. But just because like I, I didn't feel like eating fish that day and sometimes I just want to eat chicken, something that I know that I'm gonna really enjoy. Like it's not like I'm not gonna enjoy fish, but I think I'm gonna enjoy the chicken more. So with, uh, with the situation with the, the fish, like it's normal to eat fish at the beach. But if someone hears you eating like, they say, oh, you're eating chicken at, at the beach, they look at you like, you come to the beach to eat chicken. You can eat chicken in, in the city. Why are you eating chicken at the beach? And it's, it's kind of true because I go to the city and uh, like here in the city, you can eat a lot of things. Uh, but fish, even though it's common in ceviche and cebollao, like a good fish dish is better when it's at the beach. So you, you might as well take advantage. Go to the beach, eat fish, uh, eat shrimp, eat octopus. People really like that apparently, I'm not a fan. Um, I think it's because I've had the bad octopus. The other day I was hearing there's a good version and I'm like, okay, I gotta try that. Um, like there's so many other options and uh, a lot of people are always eating, eating, uh, eating chicken like at the beach, like why? Like I understand uh, the frustration, but I'm, I'm one of the people who eat chicken. Uh, so, uh, Corey, I appreciate the, the dono. Thank you so much. Uh, helps out a ton uh, for the channel. I actually, there's some things I have to talk about that I've gotten for the channel. I can't wait, uh, this hat included, but like this is just like logo and stuff. We'll talk about that later. Um, I do wanna go through the, the questions and stuff that I've been asked. Uh, but not the sweets give you a little belly, don't eat too much food. Ah, uh, you don't get sick from eating salads unless the salad is poorly made. Like, that's the problem I have with some places. Uh, for example, people, when I, I actually had some time working at a fast food place here, I worked at, uh, at KFC for like a year, uh, maybe less because I, I, did not, I did not like it. It was really bad. Um, but I noticed something that uh, I did not expect because I, I have this like very high expectation of places, maybe because of the way my dad cooks. But um, sometimes when like they're preparing the food, if the food were to fall on the floor, they would say, no, pick it up and, and put it back and, and, and cook it, like make it. And I'm like, really? And like, that's really bad because imagine the food, like you step on that, like, no. Like you could say like the, you know, the, the five second rule, but like either way, it's like not cool. So if the salad is poorly prepared and sometimes there are some places that since they don't sell food every day, they preserve the food in the fridge. And if they preserve it for too long, you know it starts to lose its, it, it's not as healthy. It's not like, it's not fresh. It starts to get like bad. It starts to expire. So if they serve you salad or stuff like that, that's not fresh, then yeah, there's a good chance that you'll get sick. It's not guaranteed. You could have a strong stomach and the, and the salad doesn't have to be like, it's not like super expired, but like it could. So uh, it's not guaranteed, but it could happen. And uh, not like, yeah, the organic food is always gonna be really good in general. So, uh, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it. I think based on what BPE is saying, like there's too much uh, like artificial, no, not artificial, fried food. I will try to see if I can make a video more about natural food, maybe like less fried stuff. Uh, I can talk about that some other time. Uh, but going on, uh, what is, where is your dad's restaurant? And what is the name of your family restaurant? We're coming for <laughs> My dad, uh, in the restaurant, he doesn't actually serve the rice. 
He uh he only serves shish kebabs, chusos, and hamburgers and salads. So uh, if you want to come for that, then definitely. My dad's restaurant. It's actually in the Puerto Viejo video, but um his restaurant is called Gonzos. I'm gonna write it down in the chat. Chusos. Uh so yeah, it's uh the food is really good. Like my dad has never cooked something that's bad. Although, of course, this is relative because maybe for me, the food is really good, but maybe for you, uh, you might just think it's okay. Like, I, I always have to realize that I can think that something is great, and that doesn't mean everyone is going to think it's great too. So it's always going to be like a mix of opinions, and I love that because everyone's opinion doesn't have to be the same. But if my opinion can help you a bit to maybe like see what it's about or like get an opinion, then sure, go for it. Uh, BP, I appreciate it. I will answer your question in a second, but let me answer Corey's question first. Uh, can you discuss altitude sickness in high altitude places such as Cuenca? Is it common, something you get used to, etc.? I actually talked about this in my 22 tips video. It was, I think, the first, if not the second uh, tip uh, in my 22 tips video. But um, you do have to beware altitude sickness. It can affect you, and there are some people who it affects more than others. You don't want to go. It, 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 I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume because this is. This can only be assumption of from my part because of uh, the way everyone works. If you come from a place that already has high altitudes, and you come here, and you experience uh, like if you if you come to higher altitude places like climbing the Cotopaxi, for example then you're probably not gonna be as affected by it as someone who comes from a place that doesn't have as many high altitudes. Because I feel like it is a little bit of a, like being accustomed to it, being used to it. If you're used to it, it's less likely for it to affect you. But if you're not used to it, then yeah, it's gonna affect you. You're gonna be like, like oh, super dizzy. Like we, we had, uh, I think it was PhD Stocks who it happened to, he's a, a Reddit user. And he even said, like, or, or she, I don't know, I think it's he, but um, I, I'm not going to assume. But um, I, I think PhD stocks had the, the situation of, um, of altitude sickness. That's what they said in their comment. And I even asked if I could share it, and they said, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, but it's like, it's something that could happen to you. Honestly, if you're not used to it, and you come and try to go to a place with a very high altitude way too quickly, it's going to affect you really badly. And the amount of time it could affect you depends, but PhD stocks, I think said was in bed for like, I think it was either one or two weeks. It's in the video. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm also gonna link that video over here so that uh, we can, if you guys wanna check it out, uh, if you haven't, it's an amazing video. Honestly, it has, like what I love about it isn't even the information that I gave, it's the fact that the community banded together gave me all this information and I was able to, to explain it in a way that was fun, like a really fun way to explain the information. So uh, 22 tips uh, before, before coming to Ecuador and paste the link. Okay, so the link that I just pasted is the one to the 22 tips video. If you haven't checked it out, it has a lot of tips. And the first one, I think it was the first or the second, is the one about altitude sickness. And there's the comment of uh, PhD stocks, if it was PhD stocks, uh, about uh, their altitude sickness, which I think is unfortunate because I don't know how much time a lot of people come to Ecuador. I think some people come for like a week or two weeks. And to be out of commission because of altitude sickness, I think it kind of like sucks because uh, you want to enjoy the time that you have and having that happen to you is like losing some of that precious time. But uh, I just hope that that means that PhD stocks comes back, like if they're not here already. Because uh, of course the first visit is great, but the second one you come more prepared and you check out more things. So definitely repeat as many times as you want. Uh, I don't know if that answered your question, Corey. Specifically in a place like Cuenca, I would say the altitude... I, I can't really vouch a lot for Cuenca. Uh, I've only been there twice for football games. Uh, a friend of mine is living there right now, just that she sometimes answers messages, she sometimes doesn't. She's very busy, she's a doctor. Um, but uh, 
I think it's something that in order for you to get used to it, it's better to like settle into it. Like if you're in a place that's already high altitude, like relax, go there, spend the time without doing anything that's gonna put you in an even higher elevation. Like too much physical activity. I, I actually, since I live in the coast, when I went to Cuenca and I played football, the day that I played, I never felt like extreme altitude sickness, but once again, I was already living in Ecuador, so I don't know if that would affect anything, but um, it never really affected me a lot, and I think it's, I think you'll be fine as long as you don't go into it too hard. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, thank you for your question, by the way, Corey. Uh, Aaron, please, come try the burgers. My dad, everyone says my dad makes a mean burger, uh, although a lot of people obviously come for the, the shish kebabs, the chusos, but um, the burgers, everyone is like, these are like the best burgers, like American style burgers. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. I don't know, uh, when people come here, I don't know if they're looking for American style, if they're looking for more Ecuadorian style, but my dad's burgers, like, I mean, I've tried them, I eat them. Not now, but like, I've eaten them before. They're not bad, they're good, I like them. Uh, I don't normally go out and eat a lot of burgers. The places I have eaten, a lot of the things that make the burgers good in general, like in some restaurants, is the mayonnaise because they, every place has like specific sauces. And some of these sauces, they're like mayonnaise, but not, not specifically mayonnaise. They're really good. So uh, some places have some sauce that's better than the other. Uh, okay, let me go on to the question by BP. Can I walk my dogs and be safe? Dogs make you safer or not? If your dog is scary, it's definitely gonna make you look more dangerous. But uh, if you walk with your dog and assume uh, you're walking your dog with one hand, you got your phone in another hand, you've got a big chain, you've got nice shoes, you've got a really fancy looking shirt, you're a target. Even with a dog, you're a target. Um, I would hate, hate, for the people who come, like like for the people who wanna like rob you in that kind of situation, like, oh, the dog is scary, let's kill the dog, scare the owner so that they feel like we're gonna like actually do something. Because I do feel like a robber who already doesn't really care about like some people's lives would care much less about the life of, a, of an animal. So a robber might target the animal first and some might even take it. If you have a dog that's like a, a good like breed, like a husky, if you have a, a Doberman, oh my God, a Doberman, I love Doberman. Uh, they look super cool. Um, if you have a pit bull, uh, some dog that could be sold for a good price, like they might just say, hey, let's take the dog. <laughs> like I'm not gonna guarantee it. I don't hear a lot of cases of people being robbed with their pets because most of the time it does make you look a little bit more dangerous, but if you're also you know, walking around with stuff that's gonna make you look like, like you're a target, then um, you could still run the risk. And I would avoid it if it's possible. Um, you know, you walk your dog and cool, but don't walk your dog with anything that you're worried about losing. That's my suggestion. Um, even if it does make you safer. Uh, Corey, I live 28 years, it takes 30 days to adjust. Your heart enlarges, athletes train in Kolo, drink tons of water, don't eat dinner late, best not to drink. Thank you, BP, for answering that question. Uh, like I said, I don't have a lot of experience in Cuenca. I've been to Quito, but I was only there for like uh, a week. And I think I went one more time afterwards, but just like for a quick visit for like a day to do something. But um, it's never really affected me a lot, but I am living in Ecuador, so I don't know if like being in the same place in the same country just like makes you a little bit more immune. But I feel like if you're coming from a place that you're already used to high altitudes, like coming to here, it's not gonna affect you as much. But all of these things, uh, definitely uh, try to take them into consideration. As an athlete, I, I feel like maybe that's also why it didn't affect me as much. Like I run, uh, I run, I do my at-home training. Uh, not right now because my elbow is still kind of like messed up. Like, I don't know if you see that there. I've been doing this hot and cold treatment. And uh, recently it's like, because my elbow was kind of like jank, it's still a little bit weird, but um, I've been trying to get it better. And um, it kind of like peeled off my skin. 
a bit. It, uh, but right, I'm, I'm a little bit better now, uh, just in case. Uh, but yeah, do we have any other questions or do we want to continue to uh, talking about Ecuador topics? Because I did make a list of things that uh, I've been seeing that I saw in the news also uh, of things to talk about. There's also one very, 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 very dark topic, if we want to call it that, like in the sense that it's not good, uh, that we're going to talk about today. I, I mean, unless you guys want to avoid it because it's kind of like not good. Uh, okay, a question. Corey, any thoughts on electric bikes? Are they popular and can they be rented? From what I understand in bigger cities and nicer cities, I, it's, it's just that I don't know if I should call it just bigger but uh, nicer. Uh, oh, uh, where is my dad's restaurant? Uh, my dad's restaurant is, I, I answered uh, Gonzo's Chusos. Uh, it's in Puerto Viejo, uh, the city of Puerto Viejo, uh, next to La Plaza del Sol. Uh, so if you're like on the, on, in Puerto Viejo and you find Plaza del Sol, uh, next to that is uh, Gonzo's Chusos. Like it's on, it's next to like a, uh, Cajero, an ATM, so uh, like pretty much next to Dulce Cremoso. So if you're anywhere around there, you'll you'll notice it. You'll see it. Just look outside for a sign that says Gonzo's Chusos. Let me see if I can find uh, if I can find the picture, and uh, let me try to answer Corey's question in the meantime. Uh, the situation with electric bikes, they don't have them in every city. Uh, they have them in some cities. For example, like I said, Loja seems to have adapted these uh, electric scooters. But uh, other places, they don't have it. So it's like, it really depends on the city, how big the city is. Uh, so it'll be hit or miss. Uh, they are popular among the people who, who use them, who find them better to use. But like, not everyone uses them. Uh, hold up, here. I don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But like, that's the logo for my dad's business. Uh, Gonzo's Chusos. So uh, if you ever are looking for it, just look for this logo, Gonzo's Chusos. Uh, it's next to Plaza del Sol um, in Puerto Viejo. And uh, Blick, thank you very much. Glad, to, glad that you're here and uh, I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. I always try to make it informative and fun. <laughs> Like, it doesn't always have to just be a video of someone talking and maybe some images. I like to like move around the stuff and have things like happen, so it's more fun. Uh, I'll answer your question in a second. Um, so the situation with electric bikes, not a frequent thing, not a thing that you're gonna see in every city, but if you're in Loja, you will find them. Uh, a lot, what some people have done now, I think they're electric, don't, don't, um, don't quote me on this, um, but now there are these like scooters that are like, uh, they look like, they're not motorcycles and they're not like the, the scooter scooters that have like the motor, but they are, uh, I think they're electric and people ride them on the street almost like they're an actual motorcycle. It's really dangerous in my opinion. Um, because I mean, it's, it's a small vehicle. Imagine the size of like half a motorcycle, pretty much. So it's like half a size of a motorcycle and it's in the middle of the street and a lot of people drive really fast on the streets. So I think it's really dangerous to ride around in those like kind of electric scooter. It feels like a moped almost. Um, but like I said, it's, it is electric. You can buy those, people have those. They own those in this city, in Puerto Viejo. And in Loja, like I said, they rent out uh, electric scooters and, and bicycles. But like, it's not something that you're gonna see in the whole country. And riding them on the street is kind of dangerous because not everywhere in the country has bike lanes. In, in Loja, yes. In Puerto Viejo, certain parts of the city, yes, I can confirm this. Quito, same thing. But uh, it's not confirmed for everywhere in, the, in every city. So be cautious with that if you're planning on, on riding a bike or using an electric vehicle. So, and thank you for your question. Appreciate it, Corey. Uh, so I answered uh, BP your question about uh, my dad's restaurant, uh, Blick. Um, 
I just found your channel. I have a family, a family near Quito and in Colombia. Are you from Manabi? Uh, I haven't really said where I'm from. Um, there's a big fight debate about that. I will make a video on that. I'm saving that for later. Um, so please, uh, just wait for that video and I promise I'll answer. But I do live in Manabi and I have familia. I have family in Quito. Uh, so who knows? Maybe my family, your family, they're friends. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the situation with me. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I, I live some time and just a little bit of, a, of an extra to the story that I'll tell one day. I did live some time in Guayaquil uh, when I first arrived in, in Ecuador. And uh, that time it was different. It, it hit me as a big culture shock when I, when I got to Guayaquil because I kind of had this kind of like expectation because Guayaquil, the biggest city in Ecuador. And when I got to Guayaquil, it felt kind of like expectation, reality, expectation, reality. Uh, that's where I kind of got the trauma of the streets. Some people have been talking about that recently that the streets are looking bad again, like there are streets with holes in them again, and it's kind of dangerous to drive. I actually saw that in a comment of the video of Mr. Second Passport. Um, I was checking out his video about uh, why he doesn't want to drive uh, from city to city, and uh, we'll talk about that later. But um, he did mention that. Uh, someone in the comments mentioned that about the holes, and I was like, oh. Um, because I was actually, I've, I've actually been very impressed with how the, how we have highways now, because here in Ecuador, there weren't highways at some point when I got here and then Correa came in, he made the highways and now we have highways, uh, and they're really nice, but apparently they must not be maintained. They must not be getting maintained or maintenance like they should, but, uh, but yeah, uh, going on, uh, BP water uh, jugs from springs or what uh, if you want to go for the more safe options of water uh, definitely go for water bottles uh, any that they sell at stores most of them are are safe um, unless they're just a bottle with a random sticker with a with a happy face don't drink that um, some people actually use the bottles to sell uh, preparado they call preparado here is like like a type of alcohol that they prepare. That's why preparado, I'm guessing. And um, they, they sell that and it's like a bottle of alcohol that looks like a bottle of water. So uh, be careful with that. Uh, Guale, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Guale, uh, hello, hope New York is going well. I have a friend who lives in New York. He, uh, he came from here in, uh, in Ecuador and he went to go live in in, in New York. And I always see the pictures, there's a lot of snow. Uh, it looks nice, but I know that he's freezing because here in Puerto Viejo, it's very hot. So he goes to, he's, he's in New York now and he's like probably very cold. I hope he's well. He used to play American football with us over here. He loved it because they never had American football here. And when we had the first team in Puerto Viejo of American football, he was all in. Like we were like the, we were part of the, the, the staff, I guess you would say. We were the players and we were the, the coaches and the staff and we were like organizing things. He loved it. But um, he's in, uh, he's in uh, the States now and I just hope he's doing well. Like I always see his pictures of his cat and the snow and it looks like he's doing well. So uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy for him, to be honest. Uh, so let's uh, continue. Uh, oh, and Rio Chico. Honestly, uh, the situation with, uh, with Rio Chico, uh, it's really close by. And uh, I do have a friend who I studied with at the university, and she's from Rio Chico. Uh, I haven't seen her in a long time, though. I hope she's well. Uh, once again, thank you for your, uh, your greeting. Uh, remember, everyone who is here and who's been an active part of the conversation, I'll be writing your names down in the in the birthday attendance uh, at the end of the live stream. Um, or if not, I might go back to the replay and check it out because I'm going to take the names, write them here, and I'm going to put them behind the poster 
that's where I always put the, the papers for the live streams. But uh, yeah, uh, let's continue. Uh, so, BP, uh, I'm guessing Puerto, Puerto Viejo. Uh, lots of bugs, mosquitoes, how much overcast. People say Olón, cloudy, rainy a lot. Uh, okay, so the situation with Puerto Viejo, I don't think there's a lot of bugs here. Like I've lived here a long time and the only time there's an excess amount of bugs is when it rains. Mosquitoes, same thing. The rain attracts them like crazy. Uh, so it really, really sucks when it rains because of that. Like the rain is nice. It's nice to see and like use it for like ASMR to relax, but it's kind of a pain when it's like, like uh, it's that season, it gets a little bit humid. The mosquitoes are like waiting to enter your house. Uh, it's, that's the bad thing. But uh, excess bugs in general, not always. In some houses, if you don't take care of your house, of course, you'll have a lot of ants if uh, you wanna count that as a, as a typical bug. Um, some people have talked about how they do have that situation with bugs. My friend, uh, Joanna, she actually mentioned that in her house, sometimes in the kitchen, like she'll find bugs like ants and that's kind of uncomfortable. So it's, uh, it's not always the best. Uh, hold up, I see a comment that, okay, uh, I don't think I can allow those comments just because, uh, well, I don't know if they're good comments. Uh, I might need a mod one day for the, for the channel um, for when we do live streams. I have some things I want to talk about later, but we'll, we'll leave that for later. For now, um, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, let me see. So uh, the part people say alone, cloudy, rain a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't been to Olón, so I can't really give my opinion about Olón. But um, if it's a place that you would like me to visit, please recommend it. Uh, I will do that because there's a, oof, that's where my, my video ideas are gonna come in because I have like a whole bunch of places I still wanna visit. From the last live stream, we talked about some places that um, a lot of the people in the, in the chat, a lot, of the, a lot of the community, they want me to go to. Uh, but I can only do so many things because I'm still kind of limited by uh, my, my economic situation. Um, it's not always good, let's just say. Um, but we are getting better. Uh, I do hope it's, like, uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, this year, a little bit better because I do have a plan. I want to, uh, this year, I wanna go to the United States and visit uh, because I haven't been there in like 10 years. So, my friends, one of my best friends from the States, he already has two daughters now, and I'm like, surprised. Uh, and another one of my best friends just recently had a son. By the way, uh, David, if you ever watch this, or if you're watching this, my friend David uh, from the States, congratulations on your son. Um, I hope he always has the most success in his life. I hope your family and your life is always successful. I already told him, but so everyone knows, uh, I really care about, uh, everyone who, who takes the time, like friends from, from any time in my life, because um, they're all a part of the process. It all helps you grow. So um, I, I really love my friends. Uh, I really love everyone who's here and like taking the time to talk, to listen, ask questions, because it's more fun this way. Uh, we can learn more and, you know, have it cool. Go to States in summer. We are shoveling snow now, oh, man. Um, you know, I've never in person like touched snow uh, or seen it. So I do want to one day go to a place that's snowy. My cousin is living in, um, in Minnesota and he's got like, he's always telling me like there's so much snow over there. Like he has to shovel it out. Like, well, he doesn't have to, but like he's uh, like, it's obviously difficult over there but um it looks really nice and um i would like to experience it um in my life uh who knows if that's like my preferred weather because i'm really i get it, it gets really toasty here so i'm like always sweating it's like kind of uncomfortable sometimes um but yeah i'll consider the summer too because 
it depends on when I can have like the, the funds to travel. I'm gonna start saving up because right now uh, I have a, in my buy me a coffee page, I'm saving up for a trip in the country to record a video. And uh, that's money I can't touch unless it's for the video. So when, I, when I'm done with that, or if I get like some kind of funds separate from that, like I'm gonna start saving up for my job, um, I'm gonna see if I, if I travel to the States. I still have to go through some processes first. Processes always sound so weird. Um, processes. Um, but if I, if I do get enough, I will definitely go to the States. Uh, I've made it one of my goals for this year. Uh, probably around the end of the year. It's like a personal goal separate from my professional ones uh, Because I want one of my main goals. I was kind of hoping for today I wanted the channel to reach 2k subscribers and For the end of the year for end of 2023. I want to have 10k or more So I'm like I'm trying to like stack the goals like trying to get better. I want to like help the audience uh, Show them more things make more videos like there's a lot of goals that I have but uh, but yeah uh, Blick, if we can make recommendations, then I would recommend you to visit the Valley of Intag. Uh, I have never been there, but seems to be very beautiful. Maybe a little bit like Mindo. Okay, um, I will definitely take it into consideration. Do I have my pen? Oh no, what did I do with my pen? Okay, I don't have my pen. Um, but since I can check out the live replay, I'll definitely check out that recommendation. Uh, there's a lot of places I want to visit. I have a friend um, from a long time ago who was from Germany who told me a long time ago to go visit Germany and I haven't gone. Um, uh, but I really want to go. Uh, another friend who told me to visit Finland. Um, I personally want to go to Canada. I want to visit Canada. Uh, where else? Japan. I, I almost forgot, like one of my favorite places, uh, Japan. I haven't been there, but um, I'm a big fan of anime. I'm a big fan of um, the culture and uh, I really want to go one day. But uh, yeah, uh, Blick, I am living in Bavaria, Germany. And at the moment, I would prefer living somewhere without snow. That's what I hear from a lot of people who live in places with snow. Like, I, I guess it's like you get so used to it like every day that you don't want it anymore. So I'm guessing there are people who are like, I don't want snow, like I'm used to snow, uh, I don't want it anymore. And um, there are people who, who really do, uh, like people who don't want it, people who do want it because they've never seen it. Like I've never seen it, so I want to experience it. But maybe that's because I've never seen it. And when I see it, I'm gonna be like, uh, I don't know. Maybe that might be the situation. What I do hope for you, uh, Blick, is that it stops snowing soon. <laughs> uh, okay, BP, uh, Minnesota is near me. If you are same size as friend, okay, you can wear his winter gear. It can be 20 degrees or negative 10. Uh, summer, wonderful, fresh water lakes up north. Okay, sounds good. Oh man, Aaron, three hours of shoveling snow. I think I might want to reconsider the whole uh, living in a place with snow. Maybe just to visit, like check it out. But living, shoveling snow for three hours, you get a good workout, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's, that's a good thing though. Um, having to do that, okay. I'll, I'll have to really, really consider that for the future then. Um, but uh, wonderful freshwater lakes. Is there a lot of fishing in or around uh, Minnesota? I've, I've always wondered because uh, like I, I, earlier we were talking about like things to do here, but like what about things to do over there? Um, I guess every place is different. Honestly, over here, uh, like I said, your best bet for anything to do in the city of where I live is uh, go out, uh, drive around, drinking at night. I don't drink, but my friends love to. Um, and a lot of people from this city love to and in Ecuador in general. That's actually one of our topics for today um, and uh, There are people who also they don't stay in the city. They go to outside of the city to the beach or Crucita it's technically 
part of the city, but it's further, so they don't consider it part of the main city. Um, but yeah, there's not, there's not like the most things to do here. So uh, I always wonder what people do in other places. Maybe I just don't know how to have fun. Uh, could be. Uh, Joe, thank you, or uh, gracias por su comentario. Remember, um, this chat is English and Spanish friendly. So uh, if you guys want to speak in Spanish, uh, I can respond in Spanish, ideally English, because I think uh, it's, it's good for everyone to learn English. It's good for everyone to learn Spanish too. But um, I don't want, uh, the majority I think speak English, so I don't want to confuse anyone. Uh, sadly, those are the only two languages I can speak fluently. Um, and fishing, yes, great, cool. I've never gone fishing. Uh, I've always wanted to try. Uh, there's actually uh, my friend. He uh, he owns like uh, his his family owns a kind of like shrimp uh, farm. Like they they sell shrimp. So he was telling me to make a video one day showing how that works here. Uh, so maybe one day I'll try to I'll try to like go and record that kind of situation so that people could see what the what it's like to like breed and sell shrimp what the process is how they do it over here because i thought it was a really cool idea because i've never seen anyone do something like that here like i don't see a lot of channels i don't see any channels talk about that um and maybe there are people who are interested so it's an idea um but yeah fishing definitely is something i want to do one day lots of great goals impressive thank you very much uh corey i've still got a long way to go um, I don't want to skip ahead to the to the part where we just talk because I have like some some things I wanted to talk about but one of my goals like coming into the to the to the year uh, I made this logo uh, and this is like now my official logo and I actually put it on this hat and um, I even had a shirt now with the logo on it and I'm really happy because I feel like it represents uh, what my channel is about, while at the same time shows a little bit of myself. Uh, the plane itself obviously travel, and but the color scheme, I like the balance of black and white because it's it represents balance, yin and yang. So everything has a balance. Uh, when you live life, a lot of the things for you to live it well, there needs to be balance. Like in terms of eating, I. On Instagram, I talk about like nutrition and workouts, and I'm like, you can't just eat like crazy. You have to do exercise, and you have to eat well sometimes too. So there's a little bit of a balance in everything. And I've, I've gone too far into, into the, the conversation part. We still haven't talked about the Ecuador topic, so let's leave that for later. Uh, Joe, llevo viviendo 15 años en Inglaterra y extraño Ecuador, casi no voy, pero me estoy preparando con tus videos para una próxima visita. Bien. Excelente, yo. Eh, excellent. Eh, espero que cuando vengas eh, lo pases de lo mejor. Eh, ya que no has estado aquí en mucho tiempo, eh, estoy seguro que extrañarás el lugar. Like, I know, like, I, I, I haven't been in the States for like, for 10 years. I really, really miss the States and my friends. Eh, so I can understand when someone's been away from the country that they've just grown so accustomed to, like, it's, it's so, like, it's sad. It's, you really miss that place. Yes, BP, I will read it in, in English. Uh, Joe says, uh, they've been living in, in England for 15 years, uh, viviendo 15 años en Inglaterra, and they miss Ecuador. Uh, they almost don't go or don't come, uh, depending on the perspective. If I'm reading it, they, they don't come. They haven't come. Um, but they're planning a trip or they're planning to visit with my video with my videos they're watching my videos to plan their trip which joe thank you so much for checking out the content honestly uh well i almost like choke um but honestly it's uh i'm glad that the content is useful to you um i always try to make it uh, as easy to understand and as like complete as possible like i could make probably 10 small videos talking about different topics, but I like to make a little bit of a bigger video that gives you all the information you need in one place. So you don't have to like, like go to different sources for it. Like you can, 
I like it when people check out the videos of other people from Ecuador, like Amelia and JP, Don Shader, definitely check out his videos. He's got no BS content on there. He's always talking about things from his perspective, like, and he doesn't like, like lie about anything. Like, that's what I like because I feel like I, we resonate. I don't think anyone lies, but I feel like he's very direct about the things that he says. And I really like that. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the other channels because everything is just to make, you know, your experience here that much better. So why not? Uh, it's all free. It's all useful information. If you guys want to help us, obviously we're really grateful for it because this is, this is our job. Uh, for me, it's just now becoming more of a job because now I can like make more content and I make it better. But um, that's what I'm trying to improve so that everyone has the best experience watching the videos and the best experience when they come to Ecuador. So, yeah. Um, I hope BP that the translation helped. Um, Proxima visita, next visit. Uh, and Corey, uh, Minnesota has fishing all over. Looks like that's the place I'm gonna go to, to fish <laughs> one day. Although I could probably fish over here, I just haven't. And yeah, go for it, Joe. You're gonna love their videos. I think you're gonna really love them. And also, I love the merch. Thank you so much. I honestly, uh, if you're talking about the, the hat, thank you. I've, um, I really wanted to have something that represented me because uh, I feel like a lot of the times I've been wearing like stuff that like of people who don't like really appreciate what I do. So it's like I have something that I appreciate myself. I appreciate the community. I want to show everyone that this is something I really believe in. So I have it. And um, maybe one day it can be something that I can sell. Like maybe people want to buy hats. Who knows? Um, but it's just something that for now I just I really like it. It looks really cool and um, it represents me. And it's something that I will be using a lot. Please don't let anything happen to my hat. Uh, but yeah. Also, uh, let's continue. I don't know if anyone has questions. Um, does anyone have a question for me? If not, we can continue to some of the topics that I have about Ecuador. We can kind of zoom past these if necessary. Uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin have communities from Saraguro. Uh, so the people are many Scandinavians. Very kind, friendly, honest. I love it. You're, you're, you're like convincing me to go over there. Like, I was planning on seeing if I went to Florida first and then Minnesota to visit my cousin. Like first my, my friends from like my childhood, then my cousin, or I, I wasn't sure the order, but uh, it's more logical to go to Florida first because it's on the way, but maybe I might have to go first to Minnesota. <laughs> It'll be cool. Honestly, uh, I've never been, so I'm just like, like a child, like super excited about the idea of going. It feels like it would be fun. Okay, I think now would be a good time to move on to the, to the topics that we have to talk about today. Random Ecuador topics that I found on online. I was investigating the news. Uh, I don't, to be honest, I don't, watch the news here very much sometimes i'll read some things and um sometimes i'll get the news from friends or family my dad always checks the news so if there's something severe he tells me about it but the news messes with you a lot because it's really negative most of the time like i can't even lie about this i don't i don't like lying it you you grab a newspaper like my dad buys a newspaper every day you grab the newspaper and the first thing you see on the front is always something about people getting killed, people getting robbed, uh, some kind of murder, assassination attempt, uh, crime. Like I know it's, it's to make the newspaper more interesting, but it really does mess with everyone's perception of danger because if that's the first thing you see in the newspaper, everyone's gonna think it's dangerous. And like, I know I've said Ecuador is dangerous, but like I said at the beginning of this live stream, it's not always dangerous. No place is always dangerous and no place is 100% safe. So it, it, it's really frustrating to see the news 
and like the first thing you see is dangerous stuff in the newspapers like it makes you really sad um i'm not i'm not like happy about it very much really uh but i really hope that they that um that they get better articles <laughs> maybe sometimes there's like these fashion articles or like something about a queen um but it's not like it's not it's the majority of it is danger and i'm like i i talk about danger and i don't like to have to talk about it but it's necessary to to keep everyone safe um okay joe thank you very much for the happy birthday wishes uh i'm thankful for you being here uh i really appreciate it i hope you're enjoying this conversation that we're having about various topics here uh we like to have fun <laughs> we like to party um Carry on celebrating the weekend. Yeah, uh, honestly, I don't do a lot of celebrating, to be honest. Um, I just kind of like, I have fun. I uh, spend time here uh, making videos. I sometimes hang out with my friends. Um, I like spending time with my family. Uh, I mean, I would love it with like if my friends, like they said, hey, let's play video games or let's go out and eat pizza. Like I, I don't, I don't, I, right now because of my nutrition, I don't eat a lot of like pizza and stuff, but like it's fun to do things like that. But most of the time I don't go out because all the plans to go out are like drinking and, and parties and like, I don't mind a party or two, but like if four weekends in a month are parties, I can't handle it. <laughs> it's too much for me. Uh, but um, anyways, thank you again, Joe. Uh, is your area safe for single women? Great be question, B. Uh, PE. My friend, uh, one of my friends, she's a single woman. Um, she's from here, of course, from Ecuador, uh, from Puerto Viejo. Uh, she has had the good luck to go out on the street and like she she does drink, not like crazy, but she drinks. And um, sometimes she's been by herself, and nothing bad has happened to her. I'm thankful because I don't want anything to happen to anyone I know. I don't want anything to happen to anyone I don't know. I don't want anything to happen to anyone, to be honest, obviously. But um, at least if I can keep the people close to me safe or hear that they're okay, I can, I can like relax and not feel like this place like has too much danger. But um, a lot of people talk about the contrary. Being by yourself uh, as a woman on the streets is tough. I won't say I'm the master on this topic because I'm not a woman who lives by, by herself uh, in this city, but I have heard women who talk about it. Some people, like some women, because they don't, they don't go out, they don't like put themselves at risk, they say it's fine. Uh, they make the money they need, they live fine, but not everyone is like that. And some people have a hard time because they go out on the streets and it's always the risk of something happening to you. Like as a guy, as a man, uh, we always like we, we, we think we can understand that kind of situation but I know we're not in the same position as women so I know that we're not gonna ever be able to understand completely what women have to go through when it comes to danger on the streets uh, and here you run double risk because obviously the risk of getting robbed is always like in, in Puerto Viejo I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say you go out and you're not gonna get robbed no there's a very high chance you could get robbed a friend of mine I, I, I was gonna leave this for later, but a friend of mine, uh, he actually recently, like he, when I was training CrossFit, I was training CrossFit around November-ish, uh, end of September, no, end of October, beginning of uh, November, uh, I was training CrossFit, and a friend of mine from there, he actually got robbed during that time. They robbed his bicycle, they robbed his cell phone. Uh, by the way, hello, Raspberry. Hi. Uh, they robbed his bicycle, his cell phone, and he was robbed by three guys on a motorcycle. Uh, like three guys were on a motorcycle, like one on one motorcycle, two on another and two on another, and they pulled out guns on him. Like you're not supposed to carry guns here. And in the, in the place that he was working at, because he worked at the CrossFit place, they gave him a bicycle for his birthday and the owner even helped him get a new phone. I was like, that was amazing. Like one of the kindest things I've ever heard about in my life because not a lot of people do that. Um, and then I recently ran into him the other day, like walking on the streets, I, I was driving and I ran into him uh, and he was like, and I asked him, how has, how's life been, how have you been? 
and he told me that he got robbed again his bicycle the the cell phone that he got and like i was like you can't be serious it had it's you haven't even had it for like six months he's barely had it for like three and he got robbed again and so did the owner of the gym he even took the not the gym the crossfit place crossfit gym they also that the owner also got robbed so like imagine it's dangerous for like for everyone here like so you gotta be cautious i won't say it's safe for women like it's not completely unsafe for women but it's not guaranteed safety so always precaution if you can take a taxi take a taxi if a friend can take you or your friend take you uh, if you can if you have a form of transportation, please use it but um always be cautious uh, And Aaron I have to agree raspberry gemstones pretty cool name uh, Thank you Kenny good to see you here glad you could make it uh, And are these robberies day or night the majority of robberies are at night but if you walk into a zone during the day, that's sketchy you could also get robbed during the day. The afternoon going into nighttime, that's also a good time to like, you know, be cautious more than normal because those are also times that people do get robbed. So be very cautious during that time. Uh, definitely nighttime is the time where you have to be the most careful because the police, most of the police stop doing the most of their job from what I've noticed past like six or seven. So around seven, eight, nine, very dangerous. And obviously past that, I don't know why you're still out on the streets, but um, if you're out still past 10, 11, 12, which most people are, um, it is also very dangerous. Uh, do they have fenced yard or buildings with security? Uh, a lot of the houses, they have like what they call rejas, which are pretty much like fences. Like if you look at this, like something like this, like, but they'll have that all over their windows. Um, sometimes the door, before you reach the door, there's like something like that, that you have to unlock first in order to reach the door because the door can be broken more easily um, and the locks. So there is, in houses, there's typically a lot of protection. People don't necessarily get robbed inside their houses. The robberies mainly happen when you go out and like you're like just freely wandering around the streets at night. Uh, made of rubber. That's a cool name if you are like Luffy or a big fan of One Piece. Uh, serial killers get rid of robbers and druggies for you in the future. Don't worry. I mean, I really don't know how I feel about that. Like, I, I understand that, like, there's this big concept of, uh, like, if they do a bad thing, get rid of them. But, like, we have to understand the process. Uh, I think it's a psychological problem. I'm not going to say don't punish robbers. Obviously, punish them. Um, but, like, also, if there's a way to help them to not become robbers and not spawn more robbers, then, like, if there's a way, then please. We need to change society. Uh, also, earlier, Aaron had said, dump the news and make your own. Um, I guess that's kind of what I do here with my, my news uh, on, on Ecuador stuff in my channel. And uh, that's actually another idea I wanted to talk about later. But we're running not the best on time. So uh, I don't know if uh, there's any other questions. Buildings with security. Uh, communities, gated communities do exist. And those are typically much safer than obviously just living in a open neighborhood um, or anywhere else. Um, even then, there's always risks, but it's definitely much safer. They do exist, and I do recommend them if they are in your budget to live in a place like that. Um, and like I said, a lot of the buildings have this. Uh, are you allowed any self-defense like pepper spray taser a knife or an attack i'm guessing attack knife attack wife <laughs> I, I i wish i had a wife that would attack people like hey you go attack <laughs> no i don't want to put i wouldn't want if i had a wife i wouldn't want to put her in danger either um but uh pepper spray 
I have heard people do carry it. I don't know if it's legal. Uh, the same thing with the taser. I think that's kind of pushing it a little bit. Uh, a knife, definitely not. Knives and guns, not legal to carry. Uh, if no one knows you're carrying it, like, you know, it's fine. But um, the same thing with the gun, but like, still dangerous. Um, but for the most part, uh, some people do carry pepper spray and tasers a little bit less than the pepper spray. Uh, but knives could get you in trouble. If no one sees it, then you know it's fine. VP, uh, if you are in USA, uh, call your congresspersons, ask them to drop sanctions. And so in Cuba, we are causing problems, in my opinion. Um, I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I understand 100%. Um, if you could explain or clarify, we could probably talk about that. Uh, but yeah, I do want to go into one of the, the topics that I have written down here for today. Don Shader uses, carries pepper spray. Oh, cool. Don Shader's prepared then. Honestly, I didn't know he carried pepper spray. Uh, I kind of expected him to be more like, uh, like no one's gonna do anything to me because I feel like, who would want to attack Don Shader? He's so cool. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the topics that I have here. Um, the extra topics. Either way, if there are questions, uh, we can keep answering them. Uh, it would be... Uh, mm -hmm. Just make sure I have this here. Okay, so we have a few topics. Uh, we can go in order, of course, because, uh, I mean, I wrote them in order, so maybe we go in order. Um, Don is the man with the plan. I just recently checked out the interview he gave to uh, the, the nice people from Canada. And um, they live at the golf course. Like, oh my God, that's like a dream. Um, I, I want to go there one day. But I hear like, I've heard that you need to have like connections. So I don't know. Um, maybe it's just for people who want to like go there for free. I don't know. Um, but anyways, I wouldn't like go for free. I would go there like if I wanted to spend a day playing golf. Uh, let's talk first about the uh, minimum wage. These are just like various temas varios, uh, random topics uh, from Ecuador. The minimum wage, it went up again in Ecuador this year. Uh, it was at 425 uh, last year. It was raised from the original 400 to 425. And this year it's from 425 to 450. Um, some people, I, I, I do always hear the, the good things about like, oh, minimum wage went up, good. But the problem is when minimum wage goes up, uh, gas goes up, which means the produce goes up, uh, even if it's by cents. My dad does the math, um, and it's always even more expensive than the raise that you get a minimum wage. So it's like, you kind of get like, uh, like, how do I explain it? You get, okay, uh, I'll use my salt container. You get like this in minimum wage, like, oh, you get more money, oh, hey, this looks like a lot. But you're actually paying for this, which is more than this. So it's just kind of like to make it look really good and then afterwards other places just kind of like, they screw you over. Uh, is that minimum wage per hour, per day? You know, um, I don't know how you're going to feel about this. Uh, you might laugh. You might cry. Uh, I always just laugh because there's nothing else I can do at this point because it's not going to change. Uh, the minimum wage is per month. People who earn minimum wage earn minimum wage every month. 450 is the minimum wage per month if you're working uh, with the conditions that the place offers. If the place wants you to have uh, high school education, college degree, and they'll pay you minimum wage for that. If you don't have the college degree and you only have high school education, they might offer you 300, 350, uh, they'll offer you less. They'll find a way to like undercut whatever they're offering to the people who have all the qualifications. 
which sucks because minimum wage is not enough to live by. Uh, if you watched my cost of living video, uh, the minimum, and that was when I first made it. Right now, it might be a little bit. I actually have a uh, a script for a minimum, a new cost of living video. I'm gonna make that uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, but like, if people were to have to like live on what the real like what the cost of living is, minimum wage isn't enough. It it's not enough. You need to live with another person also earning minimum wage or more, or you have to earn, or you have to earn more than minimum wage because if not, uh, you're not going to live with enough money uh, with just minimum wage. There are other places that do offer more than minimum wage, of course. Um, some places like. Obviously, the university university uh, offers. I think it was uh, like eight hundred to a thousand uh, per month. But in order to work in a university, you have to have your college degree and your master's degree, and they have to want you in the university. If not, you know, no chance. Um, Corey, once again, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank uh, you, thank you a ton everything that uh it just it helps uh appreciate it i appreciate you and um but that's the situation with minimum wage some places also offer per hour but um per hour payments like for example there's this english academy not the one that i work at the one that i work at has a boss who i love my boss because he's actually like he understands our situation more than other places do because the other places, other academies, they offer per hour, per hour, like six or seven dollars per hour, which is more than if you were to count like earning monthly wages. But no one, no one, no one, no one is, uh, no one's working like, no, no, like if you work at an academy, an English academy, you only work at the academy like one two or three days, maybe three days. And each day you only have like one or two hours. So if you work two hours for $6 each hour, that's 12, 24, 36. Maximum in, your, in a week that you would earn is like $36. And you multiply that by a month, my math is bad, I'm sorry, 36 times four, let me use the calculator. Uh, 36 times four, 144. In a month, that is not enough. That's how much you can earn being an English teacher at certain academies. I know that not every academy is the same. There are some academies, I think, in bigger cities that you earn more. But remember, when you're living in a bigger city, your cost of living also goes up because how much you need to live in the city, definitely much more expensive. So you have to be very cautious with that. Uh, Going on to what uh, BP said, Don Shader could take you to the golf course. I hope so. It would be cool to play golf. Like I don't, I, I haven't played golf before, um, but I've always wanted to just just for fun. Um, I played Nintendo golf. I loved it. Um, from Corey, I just retired from American Airlines and bought a virtual reality headset to stay active while traveling for some fitness classes and activities and some gaming as finding gyms is not always, you are 100% correct. Not every gym is ideal. Uh, and a virtual reality headset does let you like feel immersed in certain things like that. Uh, if you have the Nintendo Switch, they also have like this, uh, this fitness uh, kind of thing. I don't remember what it was called completely, um, but it's also really cool. Uh, the alternative, uh, if you have Apple products, they now have Apple Fitness Plus. And I do like a ninja sign, um, <laughs> but um, they have like Apple Fitness Plus. Uh, I haven't used it, but a friend of mine in the United States, uh, she was from here, but she's living and studying over there. She just got married. Diana, if you listen, if you're watching this video, if you listen to this, uh, congratulations on your marriage uh, again, um, just to make it on the record so everyone knows. Yay, Diana, I'm happy for you. Um, you found someone who was worth it. Uh, but she uses, she has used the Apple Fitness Plus and she said it was pretty cool. 
Uh, it's a good way to have a workout that's guided. Like, I do my at-home workouts and I show them on Instagram, but it's different just me doing it and showing the results than me and showing you what exercises I do. That's different from doing the workout with the person, like the person showing you what you have to do, guiding you step by step in the process. So I think, Corey, that's excellent. I think uh, having the virtual reality headset, not just for exercise, but for fun, is gonna be great. And there's a lot of virtual reality stuff coming out in the future, so I really hope you enjoy it. Hopefully one day I can do something like that. Uh, have him, Don, take you to lunch there. Happy birthday lunch, tell him we said. <laughs> Uh, BP, I will definitely tell uh, Don because we we're, with Don we're planning to do a collab. Me and Don we're gonna do a collab video, so uh, that's the plan for the future. And uh, if he wants to do it at the golf course, then that would be really cool. I'll let him know what you said though. Uh, that chat says we gotta do the golf course birthday celebration. Although I think he was more planning on like having a little interview at a. Uh, at Dulce Cremoso, or maybe at the beach, not sure. Uh, Corey, uh, well first, let me see the happy birthdays. Uh, Bespoke Vocals by Kirk Lawrence. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the, the good wishes. Uh, glad to have you here, thanks for joining. Uh, Jamie, uh, I, I hope it's pronounced Jamie, I don't know if it's Jaime in Spanish maybe. Uh, but thank you very much, glad to have you here. Uh, Anna. Good to have you back. Welcome back. Uh, hope you enjoy the time with us. Uh, now, Corey, uh, your thoughts on bringing that and showing people new technology they might not be accustomed to? They have done it. In the, in the live stream that I had in, in, the, in the event, that was, that was another time I was in Guayaquil. In the anime event, like I did a live stream in October. I was at an anime event in Guayaquil and I was, uh, like, there was this section where they were showing off, like, new technology. Like, not, not like, virtual reality, but there was, like, this, uh, this game station, like, with a, that you could drive. Uh, someone was showing, like, drawings, 3D models and stuff like that. And uh, it looked really interesting. The thing is, uh, in order to organize something to show people new technology, you have to get in touch with the right people. I feel like that's always been one of my problems, getting in touch with the right people. Because for me to, to have done a video with Puerto Viejo, like with the municipality, like I had to get in touch with people who worked with the municipality. And I didn't know who to get in touch with because it's kind of hard to talk to the mayor because he's always busy. And like, obviously he makes time for like certain people, but like, I'm not sure if I'm counted in as like part of that group of certain people. But um, it's, it's kind of random. So it's not a bad idea to show people new technology. You just have to know when and where to show it. Uh, have like a kind of exhibition geared towards that, towards that. And I have seen people do it. A friend of mine, Peggy, uh, she actually went to something I think related to virtual reality once. It was, I want to say it was in Quito. But if it wasn't in Quito, it was in Guayaquil. But um, it's never a bad idea. People are always looking for the next big thing here. Uh, sometimes they're looking for it because uh, they want to advance. Other times they're looking for it because it's, it's a novelty thing. Like if it's new, people want it, they want to see it. Uh, so it, it gets a lot of attention. But um, it really does think, feel like a cool thing. It feels like something that would help a lot. Like for example, I know it's, it's gonna be a long time till this happens, but I've been watching a lot of the situation, the, the stuff on, on videos and like uh, in the States of uh, self-driving cars, uh, Tesla, for example, and other companies that are now getting more heavily into the self-driving car game. Looks really cool, uh, looks super useful. But how do, you, how do you implement that over here? How? Like, like realistically, how, how do you implement that? It's, it's tough. It's something that um, I feel like it'll take a while because even in the process of getting smartphones over here, uh, it took longer than, than it would anywhere else. The internet didn't blow up to like maybe two years after like I got here and it was already a thing in the States. 
like big thing. Uh, over here was just like, if you went to a cyber, you could go on the internet. Very few people had laptops. It was crazy, it was weird. Um, but yeah, it's like, if, uh, if you want things to advance, definitely a great idea to show it to them. But there has to be a space and you have to have the right connections to do that. Like maybe if you were to like, like go to an event, kind of like the one that I went to, the one with uh, anime, you could ask for a space where you talk about these things. You would have to pay for that space, of course, but you can promote those things so that people feel more interested in, in being a part of that. But I don't, it's not the easiest thing, let's say. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Corey, my exploratory trip to Ecuador will be two months in March. Awesome, can't wait for you to be here. If you're here and uh, I get a chance to, if you're around where I'm at or if uh, somehow we, you wanna meet up and like be a part of a video or something, like let me know, I think it would be really cool. Uh, I actually still have a, a plan with uh, some people that, that uh, they wanted to be a part of the video, they wanted to like give their experiences. I just haven't been able to do it. Like even with Don Shader, we've been talking about that since I think like October or November but it's just been been hard. I haven't been able to go to Manta. Uh, he hasn't been able to come to Puerto Viejo. He had some time that he had gotten his surgery and um, he's a busy guy. Uh, and I, I, I have this like fear that if I stop working because I only work at the, at the English Academy and I make the videos, but if I stop working, I won't have the hours that I get from the Academy, which means I won't have my income and it's gonna be really hard for me to like sustain myself. So it's hard for me to just say, I'm gonna take a trip because it would, it would kind of unbalance everything like economically for me. And that, that wouldn't be good. Like I, it's, it's kind of scary. Uh, but uh, I do hope to travel around and, um, and make some of these videos, videos in other cities, collaboration videos. Someone recently asked me for a video comparing Manta and Puerto Viejo, which is very feasible for me because it'll give me a chance to make two videos. A video talking to Don Shader and a video here in uh, comparing Puerto Viejo with Manta. So it's really cool. Uh, all right, so, oh, by the way, Corey, uh, where do you plan on going for your trip? I, I, I said we, we could end up meeting up sometime, but maybe you're not even gonna be at the coast. Where, where do you plan on going? Uh, Jamie, we had our exploratory trip in November. Cuenca and Quito with side trips. Looking forward to exploring more of Ecuador outside the highlands. Definitely come to the coast. Definitely try the food from the coast. Uh, you're gonna love it. I don't know what you thought of the food from the highlands. Uh, it's also good. Uh, there's some dishes more than others that are better, but everyone says that in Ecuador, the best food is in the coast. And it's not always fried. There's a lot of fried food, but it's not always fried. Uh, okay, so let's go on to another topic here on the list. Uh, going on to the situation that I talked about the beaches, that it's in my title, uh, is the beach season in trouble? Uh, there was actually uh, strong waves that will happen in the coast on January 15. Uh, it actually, it's a, like recently in these days, just to give you some factual evidence from things that I've, I've actually been hearing around me, there actually have been high waves during these days and some friends, they wanted to go to the beach on Sunday. But the problem was that they, this thing started happening with the, with the waves, like started going up and like, it's, it's a serious thing, it's in the news. Like if you check out El Universo, you will find like strong waves um, in the coast. Now, it says it's supposed to stop on the 15th. Supposedly, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh no, they will happen on the 15th. But on the 13th, they're supposed to go down, which means tomorrow they're supposed to like stop for like a while, like everything's gonna calm down a bit. And then on the 15th, it's supposed to go back and start like having strong waves. So this is a problem because we are technically in beach season. So if this continues, beach season might be kind of like uh, iffy because it doesn't specify, like when I read the article and I actually pulled it up earlier also, uh, it doesn't specify when it's gonna stop. It's just for now, it's been, uh, it's been like that. There are 37 beaches 
that have a yellow flag warning, like bandera Maria, which means like warning. I think if it were red flag, it would be like, you can't go. But uh, there's the recommendation to be cautious at the beach. Like only go to the beach if like, I guess, you know, you really want to risk it. Like one of those situations where you say, go at your own risk. So there's a chance that the beach season might be a little bit in danger, but there's still no, there's still no extreme guarantee of it. But Jamie, definitely, if you come back down to, uh, to Ecuador, then definitely hit up the coast. Uh, definitely go to the beaches, have fun. Uh, definitely enjoy. Like, uh, Cuenca and Quito are nice, but I definitely want you to check out like other places in the country. And Corey, if you're still here, definitely come down to the coast. Uh, a lot of people like to stay in the highlands because it's really nice. Uh, it's cool, like not, not just cool and like cool, but it's like fresh. Um, but definitely check out the coast too. The food to die for. Uh, so that's the situation with the beaches. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't like extend for too long because uh, even though I know everyone doesn't go to the beach always, they do go the majority of the time after drinking and parties, but like, I do want them to enjoy the beach. Like people here really love the beach because they're so stuck in the city. It's super stressful. It's like you do work all the time and you want to do something to distract yourself. So you go to the beach. That's what I think that's the mentality here. But if the beach is like all high tide, all super waves and stuff like that, you can't enjoy it it kind of kills your only form of distraction. So I really want people to be able to enjoy the beach. I actually want to take my dad to the beach one of these days because he's been saying I want to go to the beach because he has like, like back pain and stuff like that. So he's like the beach always like relaxes him. So I want him to go enjoy it for like a weekend. Uh, I've been trying to organize something like that with a friend because my friend has a car. I only have a motorcycle. Um, so my dad wants to go with my family, my mom, my brother and me. Um, so we're gonna see if we like organize to go one of these days. So yeah, uh, Jamie will do. Food in Highlands was great, but I love seafood. Then you're gonna love the food from the coast. Definitely try ceviche uh, in cebollado, uh, pescado panado, um, which is breaded fish. Uh, pescado, well not just pescado. Um, you can also try camarón apanado, which is also uh, breaded shrimp, good stuff. Definitely try it out. But uh, yeah, okay, uh, let's continue to another topic. Um, I think I'm gonna avoid the bad topic for today because it's a really heavy topic and if we start talking about it now, it might never finish. Uh, so we're gonna talk about another good topic. Uh, Taiwan is offering diverse scholarships for Ecuadorian students uh, for undergraduate, PhD, and for students wanting to learn Chinese Mandarin until April 14th, which I think is cool. Uh, the time that I studied here at the university, they also, there were a lot of places that did offer uh, scholarships, but the scholarships were either from, I think it was uh, Korea, or some offered scholarships from, uh, from Spain. Spain was one of the more popular options because it was one of the ones that was mainly mentioned and people wanted to go to Spain for their scholarship because they didn't want to run into English. Uh, but most of the time in the scholarship programs, if uh, they're offering a scholarship, they also kind of force you to, to like know English as part of the process because some of the classes I think are also in English. So uh, I think it's really cool. It gives Ecuadorians a good opportunity to go out of the country which I think is an opportunity that everyone needs, no matter where they live. Because uh, the girls who did the video with me of uh, the food, they're from Switzerland, and Anna and Joanna. And they also did the one about their, their foreign exchange experience. And one of the things that they talked about was the fact that going to another country like opened their eyes to what the world is like. I lived in the States, my whole life, I came over here, it opened my eyes to Ecuador, to, to a different environment that I was not used to. So if you explore a different place in the world, it's not just a chance to like, oh, this is, place is pretty, oh, uh, I wanna try the food, or oh, like, you know, 
take pictures. It's also a chance to learn that the world is a lot bigger than you think. I, 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 I feel weird saying that because I think everyone who's here probably knows that and I'm just like, I'm the guy who, who doesn't know, uh, who's just learning that the world is, is a big place. Um, but, uh, but yeah, truly there's a lot of things that you realize, uh, a lot of things that you realize that are just different from the place that you're from because you're always used to the things that you're from at the place that you're from. Like the same people, the same school, the same uh, walkway, sidewalk, the same streets, the same uh, environment, the same, uh, the same restaurants, the same building. It's just, everything is just structured in a way that you just get so used to it. And when you go somewhere else, you're like, wow, this is different. And it's not, you can use social media and you can find out like, oh, the world is different, but it's so much different when you live it because I can see a picture of a place like, for example, earlier uh, we heard Germany. Like I could see a picture of Germany. Like it looks like, wow, like really cool. Like yeah, I can see it, but living it is, is probably like the best thing ever because it, it, it's, it's like people will show you on social media what they want to show you the best parts, but going somewhere specifically to that place, you're going to see that, yes, you will see the best part, but you're also going to see everything else that people don't always show you. That's why in my videos, like I try to show everything, like not just the good things, but the bad things too. But it's like, there's so many things to see. Like it's just so much to learn when you, when you imagine the, the prospect of exploring the world. I'm, I'm really curious about that too, but um, anyways, uh, bro Fessor, or Fessor, not sure, please forgive me if I pronounce that wrong, uh, what's up, first of all, welcome, uh, coming down first week in February, we'll be starting at Ayangye and stopping at some coastal towns, ending at Kanoa, can't wait, you're gonna love it, the coast, definitely a lot of fun, uh, Kanoa, I haven't been there in a long time, but one time I stayed over there, the beach is really nice. It's not like the best beach, but it's a really nice beach. And um, it's like a really calm place to spend the day or spend the time. And if you, if you go to other coastal towns, I kind of feel like you might hit up places like uh, Santa Elena, uh, maybe you'll go to Manta. Who knows, you might stop by Crucita to go to the beaches. Um, but I really hope that you enjoy it and that you have a lot of fun. Uh, Corey, I can pretty much visit anywhere but have a, a Airbnb reserved in Vilcabamba for a month. I have seen Quito and definitely want to see Cuenca and wanted to see Esmeraldas, but here it's not safe. Esmeraldas, um, it's because of the whole crime situation. It does kind of extend somewhere close to there. So it's recommended not to be there. Uh, like if you were to go there for a day, like just to see what it's like, I don't think you would have a bad time. Uh, like I said earlier in this live stream, in this, uh, in this whole live stream, uh, some things are dangerous depending on the time of day, uh, how you are dressed or what you're carrying when you're doing them. If you just go to check it out like a day, like drive around or have someone like show you around, I don't think you're going to have a bad time. And um, just don't like, don't go anywhere I wouldn't, something like that. Uh, bespoke, uh, Jamie's husband here, hello again. <laughs> uh, lol, travel is life changing. If more people traveled, but importantly, open themselves to the travel, they would be a uh, better place or the world, I'm guessing, would be a much better place. Definitely. Uh, a lot of people limit themselves to, um, I guess, a kind of patriotic kind of situation. I, I want to believe it's patriotism, like where you believe like your country is the best. And for sure, everyone who thinks their country is the best, I respect that because you love your country and that's okay. No one says you can't love your country, but give the world a chance. You might get to see some place that's really cool. Uh, you might learn something about a different place that you didn't know about. JD, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. 
Glad to hear, glad to have you here. Glad to see you here. I can't see you, but glad that you're here. <laughs> um, but yeah, you kind of have to be open to the idea of travel because there are people who travel and have a bad time because they, they have that idea in their mind. I don't want to be here. My country is better. Or like, I, I feel like this place doesn't have what I want. And you have to open yourself a little bit from that. Like, like experience the things, like have fun. Uh, in the in the foreign exchange video, my friend Joanna, and that's why I, I recommend everyone watch that video, not just foreign exchange students, but like everyone. Because it's not just foreign exchange students who like learn something from this. It's everyone who can learn from the travel. Like she even says it's it's an it's a it's a way to like open yourself from like the idea that you have of your country. Like you know what your country is like, but you never know what the world is like. And you have to like try it. Like try everything. Try the food try visiting certain places. If someone invites you out, like go with them. Um, even if you're not religious and they invite you to church, go to church, like just check it out. See what it's like. Because it's not the church that you're going for. Like maybe you are, if you're religious, for sure. But like maybe you just wanna see how people like do things in church here. Because it might not be the same way as they do them in another place. Maybe there might be more bonds. There, maybe there might be less. The food. It might look bad, but it tastes really good, or vice versa. It might t look really good and it tastes really bad, but you won't know that if you don't give yourself the chance to try it. Like you have to give yourself the chance to be in a place and be in that place. I can't be in Ecuador and my mind is still in the United States. My mind has been in Ecuador for a very long time now. And as much as I miss the United States and I think the United States is great, the United States is also dangerous. The United States has a lot of problems. Politics are not the best in the United States. I keep hearing this whole situation right now with, with Biden and, and like, and with, even with Trump still, like a lot of problems. Like, like why are there so many problems? But this happens everywhere in the world. Everywhere can have problems. You can't just believe because you're in a specific place that uh, this place is terrible because you're just so focused on how good the place you're from is. I know I make comparisons with the States and Ecuador, but that's because that's my point of reference. Not because I think the United States is better. Like the United States has a lot of things that they, they're better at in Ecuador, but Ecuador has a lot of things that they have a lot better than, than the States. Like organic food here is much more organic than the States. In the States, technology is easier to find and cheaper, and it's more advanced. The school system, you don't even look at the at, at Ecuador and the United States. Look at places like Switzerland. Look at places like Finland, Sweden. Places like that have amazing education. Why can't we have that here? Like, it's not wrong to ask for things that are really good from other places. Learn from them and adapt. But like, live the place that you're in. Live in this place. I'm living here right now. So, you know, I live like an Ecuadorian. Um, my Spanish is still bad. Um, in the sense that it's not like native Spanish pronunciation, but um, I like my pronunciation because it, it gives me a sense of uniqueness a little bit um, and it shows that I'm not, I'm not from here. So, you know, it like, it's kind of like distinguishing. Uh, I like, it. it's just another part of my persona. Uh, but yeah, that was the situation with the topic of uh, the scholarships from Taiwan. Uh, I really hope that anyone who's from Ecuador, if they want a scholarship from Taiwan, uh, take advantage. There's still time until April 14th. That's a long time. Um, so we're going to skip the, the bad topics here because there's, uh, there's two topics, kind of one that's really heavy, one that's just kind of like extensive. Uh, because then we're going to get into ethics and stuff like that. And I don't want to go into that too much right now because there's not a lot of time. Uh, at 7.30, I promised I would uh, do some other things. Um, so let me talk about some video and channel plans. Uh, like I said earlier, I am planning on doing a video of Manta uh, collaboration with Don Shader. And I also want to do a comparison of Puerto Viejo and Manta and maybe even a um, just a Manta video. Like I did a big Puerto Viejo video and I wanna do a big Manta video, but uh, I need to find a way to get to Manta and record there and stay there for like maybe a week to record. 
and just talk to people and organize things. Because a video like that takes some time, you know? Uh, I'm also planning on making a cost of living video too. Uh, this video that I'm planning on making will include a lot more information about um, cost of living, being a little bit more specific with bigger cities uh, in order to make a comparison. So the cost of living, cost of living video too, uh, that's probably coming out soon, hopefully this month. Um, I already have most of it scripted because I already found most of the information I need. I just need to <sighs> find the right time to record it um, and make sure it's perfect because I like to make these videos perfect. If there's any questions about cost of living, make sure to ask so that way I can add them in the video. Uh, there's also a video I want to make about the comparisons of hotels in Ecuador. Uh, I want to make two. There's one video that I want to make about the co about the hotels, like the most expensive hotels in Ecuador, comparing them city by city, or maybe just the big cities because every city would be complicated. Um, I'd probably never finish. Uh, and then I want to make a hotel comparison video between the smaller hotels, uh, comparisons of smaller hotels, so that um, so that uh, people can like. If they don't like the more expensive option, they can go to the cheaper option. And then maybe I can make a separate video talking about the experience between both. What I liked, what I didn't like, and what I would recommend for people wanting to stay in either a cheap or an expensive hotel. Uh, I still have to make a competition for the Encebollado, the best Encebollado in Puerto Viejo. Um, I know it's that's more of a video that I want to make. I hope you enjoy it because I'm thinking of either doing a live stream or I'm thinking of trying to add it or trying to do it like a, a planned video because if I do a live stream, it'll feel a lot more realistic. But uh, if I do a, a planned video, it'll be a little bit uh, like, it'll still be realistic. Like there's gonna be no lies, but like it's gonna be the actual opinion of the people who are the judges of the video. But it's gonna be like, I think a little bit more artificial. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, if you have any comments, if you prefer the video to be like, actually, let me do a poll really quick. Uh, start a poll. A, a weird poll question either way. In se boyado competition. Live or pre-recorded slash edited. Uh, I'll leave the choice to the community, to you guys. Um, what do you think? If I make the Ensemble competition, do you want it live? Or do you want it to be uh, pre-recorded or uh, well, live and pre-recorded or do you want it to be, no, Live or pre-recorded? Ah, I keep confusing the two. I'm getting a call. Give me a second, please. Um, uh, say hi. Um, okay, so, uh, let me see, JD, Corey, Amy, you have a very unique video style. Thank you, Jamie, I appreciate it. Uh, hope you are well. I really hope JD is doing good too. What about a video about the way they make an Encebollado in different cities of Ecuador? Definitely, I love that idea. I love Encebollado, <laughs> so I definitely wanna do it. But I need to get around to going to each city. Um, I also wanna make a video about Carnaval. Uh, maybe we can experience Carnaval in Ecuador together. I don't, I don't recommend to myself recording during Carnaval, like in the literal Carnaval celebration, um, but I wanna try it. Like maybe I wanna make a video like at a place that's safe with some friends uh, and have fun with it. Uh, idea, have your dad do cooking class on he could, like, my dad doesn't make him but my dad could show us how to make guatita. 
And I think that would be really cool. Um, and there's also a video that a friend of mine asked me for, specifically for here in Puerto Viejo, but I want to make maybe various videos about this. Uh, I visit each city and I, with someone obviously, we choose the best places to go on a date. Like if you have a couple or if you're coming here with, uh, with your wife, with your husband, like what would be the best places to go on a date? And we can look at factors like how economic and cheap it is or how nice it looks or the comparison of those two things. Is the food good? Does it have to be good or does it just have to look really nice? Like what are the factors that would make someone uh, consider like going to, to like watch something like, like to, to like go on a date to this place? Okay, so, so far uh, these are my video plans. Uh, that I have for the moment. Uh, so BP, if my dad can, I'll have him make a video about how to make guatita. I think you're gonna like it. Hello Arlette, thank you very much. We're actually gonna hang out soon. She's probably here right now. She's like waiting for, for us to get ready. She was actually calling me, so I think uh, we'll stay here for a little while longer. Uh, just, I wanted to mention uh, two more things. Uh, one, I'm gonna make another poll. So uh, for now, I see that the Encebollado competition, the majority want it pre-recorded. Uh, if everyone wants the Encebollado competition pre-recorded, perfect. Then we'll make a pre-recorded, uh, edited video of the Encebollado competition. Like that, it's gonna be much funnier, trust me. I, I already have the idea for the intro and I, I laugh at it every time I think about it. Um, but I'm going to end the poll for that because I want to make another poll. Uh, so, my question to you as my community, as everyone, I don't know if you, if you, if what you think about this, but I was thinking, uh, should I start a podcast? Uh, yeah, yes or no. Uh, so, and let me explain how the podcast would work. Uh, I would, in the podcast, I would talk about different news topics uh, live. We would, uh, I would make a live video once every two weeks maybe. Uh, I'll try to invite someone to talk about it with me. Uh, we can talk about it together and give our opinions and maybe answer some questions about Ecuador and about the topics of the podcast um, so that we can like, we can learn a little bit more about what's going on because some of the news, you know, happens one moment and then like it's irrelevant the next. Uh, maybe it's fun to hear the ideas that we have because we have different thought processes, you know, processes, that, that word. So uh, basically uh, it would be uh, talking about Ecuador uh, life. So basically it would be, uh, okay, uh, BP, great question. Uh, what I do right now, right now specifically, is I always look for what you're looking for, like everyone from the community. If you have a question, like suppose you ask, uh, what are some tips that you can give me before I travel to Ecuador? Okay, I'm gonna make a video about that. But in my podcast, uh, we'll grab topics from the news, uh, for example, these are just the topics from today that I was going to talk about. One topic was uh, the one about the waves, uh, how the waves might influence the, the coast, the beach season. Uh, the other topic was about the scholarship. And the other two topics that we're not going to talk about today because there's no time, um, unfortunately, is uh, there's this one topic that showed up literally in El Universo, the newspaper. It says, being drunk justifies murder in Ecuador. So according to the article, psychologists consider that even though alcohol has negative effects, and everyone knows that alcohol has negative effects, a lot of people accept them in the country. Like, like they know it's bad, but they'll keep drinking and they'll keep accepting that it's okay if something bad happened, as long as you're drunk. Like, because you're drunk, like, it's justified. I don't agree with it, obviously, but um, that's what the news article was saying 
that the mentality of most people, it kind of gears towards that situation. But we can talk about that topic. And another topic that we were going to talk about today, but we got into too much uh, Q&A, um, was the situation about this man called Herman Caceres, or Caceres, I don't know. Um, but he is convicted of murdering his wife. And um, the problem with that is that he tried to run from the country and he hid in, in Colombia. And he used to be like a, like a general or a commander in the police. And supposedly he murdered, supposedly, it's still not confirmed. But um, she went to go search for him during this like party. And then she never came back. And then they found her in like a mountain or a hill close to the, to the police uh, station where this man was. And it's, it's sketchy. So supposedly today, uh, he was giving his, his opinion, uh, like his side of the story to what happened. Like he already, had, he had escaped the, comp the, the country and the police found him on the 30th of December and they brought him back to Ecuador and now he's to stand trial. And he's giving his side of the story today, if he hasn't already. So um, that's those topics, we can talk about them in the live stream. Just various things that maybe one video, I can't cover it in one video, like I could, but in one video, I compress the information to give you the best, uh, quickest form of information possible. Quick, informative, uh, and entertaining. But in the live stream podcast, we can talk about all my thoughts on the situation, and that would be the main difference. Um, but yeah, that was the situation with that. And I can see from the poll, uh, everyone says yes. So I think we'll start doing that. Um, the first one will probably be at the end of this month then, because I wanna do one every two weeks and then eventually maybe do one every week. Um, we can also answer some questions there based on the topics we're talking about or various topics. Um, and yeah. The last thing that I wanted to talk about um, is my achievements. Um, I'm really happy to say that, uh, again, I made this logo. I'm really proud of myself. Um, I hope everyone loves it because it's something that I want to show represents the channel and also represents what I feel is balance in life. Traveling is actually a part of balance. Don't just stay where you live. Explore the world. Get to know how things are in other places, you know? Um, also, um, I wanted to talk about the channel banner. I don't know if everyone noticed, but if you go to my channel, there's a new banner now. It looks really nice. Um, I modified it. It still follows the, the same uh, concept of yin-yang, uh, balance, but with more information. Um, I also bought some gear for the channel. Like obviously the, the shirt and the hat is like for me to wear so that you can see that this is what, this is me. Um, and if you ever see it, you know it, it represents uh, the channel, uh, travel to Ecuador and stuff like that. But there's also, I bought this gimbal that um, it's gonna help me record so that maybe I can record out on the street. Like if we do the live stream, normally I have this tripod, but now I can have a gimbal that'll help me like position the camera in different angles and it'll still follow me and like look really nice. So I wanna test it out uh, as well. But uh, yeah, that is my, uh, that is the thing that I recently uh, bought for the channel. Um, like I bought it for my channel, like, hey, happy birthday channel. Uh, for myself, I bought some shirts, um, some pants, because I've been using the same clothes since much before quarantine. Uh, and I think it was about time. Whenever I had new stuff, it was because my friends like gave me some stuff. What do I use for a mic? I actually, in my, uh, in my last video, I put it in the, in the, in the description. Uh, you can go, you can click on it and it'll take you to Amazon to where I bought it, but let me show you. Uh, right now, I'm not using a mic. It's just the, the phone. The, I'm using my, my phone that I use to record and it's using its mic. But the mic that I use oh, is over here. I come with sound effects. When I drop something, I like, oh, I get traumatized. 
Um, but the mic that I use is the Rode uh, Wireless Go. Let me show you it uh, right here. This is it. It has uh, two parts to it. This part is where you speak into, and this is the part that goes connected to the device that's doing the recording. So since I record on my phone, I connect it to the phone and um, I record and I wear this so that it, it absorbs my voice. And uh, how do I hold my phone? I hold it with a, with a tripod right now. Uh, this was the first tripod, well this was the second tripod I bought because the first one I bought, uh, I don't know where it is right now. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, over here. This was the first tripod I bought. And now I'm using the one over here. Let me show you, let me remove it from here. So that's the, the tripod I have right now. Uh, this is the, the thing that holds it. And I had to create like an adaption to it. Like I took a part of a ruler and I, I connected it with tape. Uh, I know it's really, it's really a uh, quote unquote creative in my part, but um, it was all that I had. Uh, and it was the best way I could think of to like, because this is where I, when I record, I put the, this here so that it can hold the, the receiver for the mic. So I just put the, the phone on there and the receiver just connects everything to the phone. So that's pretty much my setup for recording. And when I get the gimbal, it's gonna be like a different, a different kind of setup. I mean, it's gonna be the, almost the same, just uh, with a little bit more uh, flexibility because the gimbal is a little bit more free, I guess you would say, since it has, not free, it's, it was actually expensive, but like it's free in the sense that I don't have to just hold it like this because the gimbal extends so it can record me from a little bit further and it will move with me. Like it doesn't like, like suppose I have it like this. If I move the phone like this, it's not like the, the camera's gonna angle up. It's gonna follow me like this because it's gonna always stay in this position. Uh, gimbal, uh, it is spelled like this. Uh, let me see if I can, if I can show you the link, give me a second so you can check out the link for the gimbal and also so you can check out the, the link for the gimbal and also the link for the, uh, my, my watch, uh, and also the link for the microphone. Uh, this is the gimbal that I'm buying. Let me copy the link and put it in the chat. Uh, it's this thing right here, the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. Uh, there's also, the, the thing that I showed you, the, the tripod is called the Joby Gorillapod. Uh, and it's this thing right here. Yeah, uh, I'll list all the things in my description. Right now I'm gonna put them in the chat so that you can see what they are. Um, let me see. The tripod adapter, which is the thing that holds my, my tripod. Uh, that, okay, the thing that I put on my tripod to hold my phone, uh, that's this thing. The Bastar smartphone tripod adapter. And my microphone is the Rode wireless go I like it because it's wireless because there's a lot of different mics that you could buy also that are wired but I wanted something that gave me more freedom when I recorded because I wanted distance from the phone so I could record like at this distance like a lot of people what they do is they connect the mic to something else, they record the audio separately, and then in editing, they combine the audio. But I didn't like that idea. I preferred it to all be seamless and direct. So I, I definitely invested in my channel to, to make it to make it better, so that the content would be really good.
but yeah, um, those are the things that I use for my channel. Uh, the gimbal, I'm gonna use it soon. That's why I've already listed it as one of the things that I use because I'm definitely gonna use it. If it costs me what it costs, I'm gonna use it. And in the future, I wanna buy a drone because I wanna start getting a lot of like scenic uh, footage so that I can add into my videos. And maybe I can do recordings where the camera follows me and it's like flying around. Um, maybe we can do like a kind of spin shot like that. And I think that would be really cool. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm playing around with ideas. Um, I really appreciated that uh, Jamie said that I had a very unique uh, video style. I like adding the text and I like adding the images and I like adding all the things into my video that, that could help because everything that I put into my videos is so that it can help the audience, it can help the, the community because sometimes a video has to be fast because this is, and the last thing we're gonna talk about today, YouTube kind of forces you to make things entertaining. Oh, sound effects. Um, YouTube kind of forces you to make things entertaining. So like, I have like, in a video, let's just assume I have like, the first 10 seconds or 30 seconds to get your attention. And I have to keep your attention. So sometimes people wanna go by a video really fast, like five minutes, eight minutes, they're done. Like no more video. At the end of my videos, I have bloopers. So if you don't watch the end of the video, you're missing the bloopers. But, um, but the point is that because of the speed that people watch videos, you don't get to say everything you want to say. Like sometimes there's a lot of information you wanna say, but you have to compress it into something that fits into a 30 minute format. So for me, that's sometimes complicated because there's a lot of things I wanna talk about. So that's why in my videos, I include text. Bloop. A little piece of text that shows up over here or a little piece of text over here that tells you a little bit more information that maybe I couldn't say in the moment of the recording. Like my last video, I, I put at the beginning, editor's note, I'm sorry for the wind because it was really windy. And um, I'm sorry for the, the lighting because I had to record in an angle where the light wasn't in my favor. Um, so I, I, I have to apologize, but I don't wanna just take 10 seconds of the time saying, oh, hey everyone, uh, sorry about the wind, uh, I apologize. Because I want your experience to be what you came for. You came to watch a video about the holidays that you have to avoid. So that's what I'm gonna show you. But I will tell you so that you know what happened in a little note. And you can just pause and if you wanna look at it, then check it out. Or just, if you can read it, you read it. If not, it's not a problem. I just wanted to be sure that I communicate. So I put down notes to communicate extra little things that are helpful for you or things that I wanna say that maybe I can't say in the middle of recording. But yeah, uh, I think we're gonna leave uh, the live stream there. We're gonna stop the live stream here right now uh, because I have to go out for a bit. Uh, but I definitely appreciate everyone who stuck around during the live stream, everyone who, who took the time to, to be here, to experience this uh, with me because um, it's not every day that's my birthday. Uh, it's not every day that we get to talk about these things because most of the time I think it's just me making a video, you check it out and we don't get to interact. I love seeing the comments because I like responding and telling you all the things that maybe I couldn't tell you in the middle of the video. Um, but I know it's not gonna be something that you can do all the time. Um, and it, like everyone's not gonna comment all the time. Um, so yeah. Uh, one of the, I forgot to say, one of the, the goals that I had was, like I said, well, I did say it earlier, I want to reach 10K subscribers this year. Uh, ideally, I wanted to reach 2K for my birthday, but um, it came close, so I'm happy. And um, there's still a lot more to do. We still have a lot more uh, videos to make. Uh, like I said, I'll be making more in the process of these days. And uh, I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I will be, like I said at the beginning of the live show, at the beginning of the live stream, I will be writing down the attendance for everyone who was here and who made a comment, a positive comment, uh, into the attendance for my 2023. And uh, I will be putting it behind the poster. 
Uh, so I will be making a community post about that soon. Uh, so expect your name to be on that list if you are here. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Uh, please enjoy it. January 12th. I always like to say this is my day because it's my birthday, but it's obviously everyone's day because everyone lives on this planet. Everyone enjoys this day or some people maybe not because maybe they have a bad day, but I hope it gets better. And I know I'm talking a lot, but um, I, I talk a lot sometimes. All right. So uh, let's say bye. Uh, Kenny, take it easy. Have a nice day. Uh, bespoke. I don't know if I should just call you Kirk. Uh, thank you too. I appreciate the support. Uh, Aaron, thank you so much as always for your support. BPE, if you're still here, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking your time to, to be a part of this live stream. Uh, Arlette, thank you for being here. JD, appreciate you stopping by. Jamie, thanks a ton. Corey, appreciate all the support, you being here, your comments, talking, uh, everything, the, the donations. I, I, you've helped me a lot today, really. Uh, I didn't expect it. Uh, bro, uh, Fessor, or Fessor, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Thank you for being here. I know I'm going through the list, uh, but I want to make sure I say bye and to everyone uh, if they're still here. Uh, made of rubber, thank you for stopping by. Uh, Raspberry Gemstones, still a very interesting name. Thank you for being here. Joe, thanks for, for being here. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy the content. Don't forget to check out Don Shader and Amelia and JP. Uh, Blick, also thank you. Uh, and it seems like I can't go any higher on the, on the chat over here. So uh, I will, uh, like I said, be writing it down in the attendance. Everyone. Take care, and as always, ace out.